crazy way. Yeah. So let's talk about Yolanda. Muckin' going around. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I oh, hope everybody's doing all right tonight. Yeah. Broadcasted live from Northern Kentucky and Australia. So what's going on with you, Cap? Howdy, everybody. Hope everyone's doing all, you know, well, happy, healthy. You doing all right? Yeah, a bit tuckered out. Tucker out? What did you think about the last show? Uh, I'm still shaking. Like, physically shaking. Um, Pretty wild, wasn't it? Yeah. And it's kind of um, indicative of a lot of stuff going on, which is really sad. Um, it brings up a lot of stuff like privacy, ethics, stuff like that. You know, because just because someone's passed over doesn't mean they can't have their privacy protected and things like that. Right. So that brought up a little bit. And um, protection as well from a, another incident this week. That kind of shook me up a bit as well. But other than that, pretty good. I've been behaving myself as best I can. <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's good yeah yeah, mm, yeah when, I, when, when i first looked at that case i was like yeah that did not happen that morning it, that no i agree it was too clean too obvious and the time difference between the um you know them saying that she's missing and the finding of the vehicle like, yeah, nah. people on the way to work, they're like, oh, no, we saw that vehicle. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just quietly by the side of the road there, immaculately yeah, clean. In, in the field next to the it. woods, yeah. And then the bell, uh, you know, quarter till noon, we saw a suspicious vehicle in the field. Oh, oh come on. No. Nah. Uh, you ain't going to believe this. You remember that doll? Yes. The arm? Yes. Was it in paperwork? The arm? No. Oh, no. So I went to print a shipping label. Yeah. And I moved one of the evil twins. <laughs> and the arm was in the doll's hand. And when I moved one of the dolls, it hit the arm and the hand, the arm flew out of the hand and it landed on the desk and it hit the desk and it hit the floor. I about fell out. Mm. Now, the member of the evil twin is probably about 17, 18 inches tall. Yeah. And remember, <laughs> the one that was missing the arm is this tall. That, yeah. Now, how did that? <laughs> Get that <laughs> arm in that big tall doll. Beats me. This is the one that was crawling on my foot. And and that is that that's not the one that jumped. That's yeah, I remember that. That one. was the one that kept falling and committing suicide. Yeah, yeah Gretel. I looked look, did a little look for the arm one time, about a month ago or whenever it was, and I thought the arm was mixed up in some paperwork, like so you in. were so you were right. It was it was the 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 evil twin was actually sitting with my shipping labels. Oh, so, so you paperwork. so you so yes. So huh? I have my shipping labels fed, and my doll sitting on top my thermal printer on top of my studio. So it prints off to the edge of the of the studio desk it's like my studio desk is a big l yeah so yeah oh wow so and when I that fell out of the doll i mean why was it holding it why was it holding it it was exactly. holding the damn arm it's just to stir you up but that's freaky freaky like, freaky doesn't come freaky. close yeah no nah. all those like, little... what? No, man. Oh, right. Lord have mercy. I mean, it, it shook me to the bones. So, yes. There's no new ones, are there? No. <laughs> no, no. Uh, That's good. Uh. 
That's really good. I found it really interesting how I had one identical to one of your other ones. Did you get those photos I sent over? I got so much going on with my emails. And did you send me, was it emails that you sent me? Yeah, it was an email because I have one identical to, you know, the little one that the eyes are dark brown and they, you oh, didn't realize they opened? Doll pictures? Yeah, but do you want me to Why? go get her? Oh, mine She's as well. Not, there's no funny business with her, none at all. Oh, but that's you want what me they to... all say until they get them on the air and then they all act crazy. Mm. Shall I get her or not? Yeah, why not? Okay, hang on. You'll flip when you see how similar they are. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I put my GoFundMe out there because people were having problems with uh, uh, getting the stars working. And I found out, too, that on different platforms, you have to earn so many stars to get the star money. And some people are having problems getting the stars working. So I, I threw out my GoFundMe. Uh, hello, Lizzie. Welcome to the show. Uh, there's my GoFundMe, and uh, I'll throw it out there every from time to time. Uh, 99 cents, a buck, two bucks, three bucks, whatever your heart desires, you know, it's out there. Use it. I greatly appreciate it. If it was for you, I wouldn't be here. Also, uh, just a quick note, uh, I have a lot of requests uh, for these crucifixes in my spiritual warfare kit. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I know, really. And uh, so I, I split them up to make it affordable for people to buy them. They are blessed. Uh, here's what That's they look beautiful. like. They, they got Jesus Christ on them. Uh, they're an animal and animal. Enamel uh, with St. Benedict, uh, uh, Christopher on the back. Uh, they are blessed. You hang them uh, above your doors, and uh, or if you want to wear them, you can wear them. <laughs> or you can hang them anywhere. Did I just, my computer just crashed. Isn't that weird? I bring something holy in front of my computer. Now, during yeah. the last show, my light turned off, and my TV come on. Yeah, I was like, what in the world? But these are only uh, $12.95, and, I, and I'll put the website down below. Uh, but anyways, they're, they're good size. They're, they are beautiful, they are. Uh, but I split them up. So I, everybody wanted me to, uh, put them out there. So there's a website for that. Feel free to get them. And, uh, I will be putting this along with, uh, probably next week, a bottle of holy water, <laughs> uh, for $21.95. So just remember the holy water in the white bottle, ladies and gentlemen. You can't put it in people's water or food. It's, it's chlorinated because of the COVID. You make people sick. So if you, need, if you need special prayers for cleansings and whatnot, what to do, let me know. I'll got you covered. So I just mailed out a couple of kits today for people, but yeah. But everybody keeps asking me about them, so I, I thought, well, I might as well just go ahead from time to time, bring them uh, on the show and let people know. They, they are beautiful, yeah. They are. They're really beautiful. Is that like your ring? I this, always look at your beautiful ring, yeah. Yeah, that is actually my uh, high school ring, back from 93. Oh, I always look at that. It's beautiful. Yeah, my high school ring. So. Okay, you ready? Yeah, certainly on. Yeah, I'm ready. Hold on. Oh, that looks just that, like mine. Exactly. That looks and the, eye, the eyes shut like the same as yours and, she, and they're beautiful brown eyes, the same as yours. See? That, that does. That looks just like mine. But do you know what? She's got turquoise ears as well. Like that's how she came. I've had this since uh, 70 about 71. Does the head um, move at all? Yeah, just nods. Yeah, mine does too. Yeah, I think because um, originally dolls all had blue eyes. See what? And blonde hair. Now these girls are indigenous 
girls. They're almost identical. They Same are. dress. Look. Little black that is shoes. Wild. She also got black shoes. Yeah. Yeah. I think they were made specifically like to represent non white. You know, because all the all the white all the dolls before that had blue eyes and blonde hair. So they weren't representative of everybody. See? And the same bun, look. Yeah, that is. <laughs> I there's no funny business with these babies, I don't think. I think no, it's um, you know, other they're not Freddy. Mine's evil. <laughs> well, I've done been told they're evil. That, not now. <laughs> She's got a mate. <laughs> I done I done I done done a cleansing like three times with holy water, five prayers. The first three prayers, I couldn't even say them. I was mumbling and stumbling and hiccuping and so like they're identical except for the dress, you know. The yeah, clothing. that is. That's weird. And, and so, is your hair soft, like soft yes, hair? Yes, yeah, very same. soft. Yeah, same. But yeah, I've had that a long time, 71 or something. Dad bought uh, it back. Rebecca from... wants to know uh, what about brown hair and brown eyes? Same. Brown no brown hair. She's got black hair, but she's got the brown eyes. And you know, they do look spooky when the sun shines on them, but they do. They yeah, do really do. But they were the first dolls that came out with brown eyes. Yes. Don't worry, I've got a Got my babies around. <laughs> well, I just want to see if it was going to turn my screen off again. Wasn't I'd that weird not. how I did that and it and it oh, and that. it turned my computer screen off? Yeah. But on the last show during during talking, my overhead light, see my light, it turned off. Yeah. Then my yeah, TV turned that. on. I was like, Yeah, I noticed that. Do you know what we were talking about then? Yes, I do know what we were talking about. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, Lizzie, they are creepy. Yeah, they are, but but I think they're not meant to be. I think they were just to, to, meant to represent all different nationalities. But it's weird. I wonder how you got yours because they got to be made by the same people. Dad bought it back for me. He, um he was on sabbatical and uh, we, we were up in Fargo, North Dakota, up that way. And um, we got her up there. Okay, so the both so so it came from America then. Yeah, yeah. Dad bought it right from like the right from the source. Back from the sixties and seventies? Yeah, his first trip over was about sixty. So that's about right. Or something. Yeah, and then um because he used to get me, you know, something from any of the indigenous sides of things. Because we're like Mexico, Fargo, North Dakota, all different. We had Yaqui Indians in Mexico. Then we went up north to Fargo. So I think we had uh, Sioux up there. But, yeah, I've just had it in the cup, you know, protected for a long time. But when we when Dad brought it back, like she's got turquoise earrings, which is high protection. Um, and then we had another little turquoise necklace that we kind of smuggled in on her. <laughs> but, yeah, I've always felt good vibes with her. Yeah, It's well, interesting. Yeah. Well, what was not interesting is when I went to print that label out, the ship, those, uh, the, the, the warfare kits, because the, the warfare kits comes with two of these, it comes with uh, eight small crucifixes, uh, four Benedicts, uh, Christopher Benedicts, uh, Pendix, and uh, a bottle of holy water. And because you, you put uh, the crucifixes around the house and around the property at four corners and the uh, St. Benedict Pendix and each window seal, and we got prayers for each room and a candle uh a white uh and everything's blessed with holy water and i yeah. and the thing of holy water and i was printing labels out and i had to move one of the evil dolls the twins 
And when I picked it, I was like, what the hell is that? And it, it just like, it, it was like, it, to me, I know it, I know it's not. Okay. So I'm going to add lib this a little bit, but to me, it was like, Hey sucker. And it like, and, and, and it was, cause I, when I picked the doll up, I was like, what is that? And then, and, 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 it, and it, I, it, it felt like to me, which I know it didn't, but I want to say, and I know it re- in reality, it did not happen. And like it tossed it hmm. because when, when it came out, it kind of arched a little bit. And I want to blame me because maybe the doll tilted, right? But it, it came out and it came over the desk, hit, hit the, hit the, over the top of the desk, hit the bottom of the desk and it, and it landed on the floor. And I was like, what was that? And I was like, that was just no way what I just thought that was. I'm like, how in the world would have it in its hand? That's freaky. Yeah. And you know, like, why now? Yeah, I know. And when I scoured the studio, I mean, I took everything off my L shape. Yeah, I even I took the vacuum cleaner apart. Yeah. I even looked in the box where that one psychic told me to look, and that she even know I, I had a box. She said, look underneath the box. I was like, how do you know I had a box? But I did during one of my live shows because it drove me nuts. I mean, I even looked underneath my um not my my chase in the studio. You everywhere. Yes. So some odd things happen. I can I concur. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, but yes. You know, last week I couldn't come. Sorry about that, everybody. Yeah, that's out. all right. It happens. I went out on the, on the field. I'm still looking for this guy. So um, I ended up, I got sidetracked up the top of this big hill um, because the area that I was searching, I didn't think that was, no, it was a no-go. So anyway, I thought I'd get sidetracked and go for a bit of a fossick. So I parked the car, walked up this big hill. There's no one there. It's just myself and, you know, the birds and kangies and that. Anyway, I got right up to the top of this hill and you can see a long, long way, 360 degrees all around. And uh, I got lost. And um, the area, you, oh, you've all freaked me out with all the big feeties, etc. I get up there, I'm lost. All of a sudden, hey, Ozzy, um, all these cockies, there would have been maybe a hundred of them, big white cockies, all started flying around the whole area. You could hear them for miles and miles. And I thought, hmm, this is interesting. Then this whopping big kangaroo, big, big, big beauty, went bouncing along. And I thought, oh, I'll just um, settle down here, ground myself, you know, and just settle down so I don't start to freak out because I'm lost or, you know, whatever. And um, I started looking around. All the trees were crossed, lying down crossed. And then this, these sticks were everywhere around. All this markings on the sticks where the sticks have been stripped. The area is high tourmaline which is my favourite protection stone. You can't see it. Mm -hmm. They sparkle. You can't really see it. Like. uh, Yeah, okay. Highly protective in my world. Um, So I'm sitting, standing there thinking, hmm, this is interesting. Because of you guys telling me about how all the trees are, you know, crossed and, all the grass was flattened. Um, uh, instantly I thought of all the other shows and I thought, okay, settle down, you know, because <laughs> um, I was smack bang in the middle of it and it was a circle, you know, uh, in the trees on the top of this mountain, which is all tourmaline, highly magnetic, full-on energy place i love it up there because i feel safe and it doesn't matter what goes down i don't care i always i love my tourmaline and um so i had a little look around you know and i thought oh okay you know i said better go now you know so i go down the hill and i found my way back it was all okay but it was interesting like seeing 
all of these everywhere. Like it's possibly a kangaroo's um, den, not a den, but, you know, where they all sleep at night and that. But I don't know of kangaroos that do this. And there was heaps of them stripped like that. Let's light it up in front of the camera here. Let me, uh, does it got teeth marks on it? Uh, or just the barks off of it? Yeah, the barks off it. And it's got all this um, worm. Oh, I can't do it back to front. This wormy type thing going on. Huh. It's pretty though. So I picked that up. And then um, uh, yesterday I had to run away. I had to get out as well. So um, I took off again because I really needed to ground. I'm not freaked out, but I res yeah, I'm respective. Yeah, I'm respective, very respective. And now I look you, out. You, you, you should have went. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And not far, f <laughs> not far from me, Grizzy, uh, have been two sightings. So one of my next ventures will be to go out and check one of these last locations out because it's out not far from me near the waterfalls. Um, so yesterday I decided I needed grounding, super duper, so I took off in the car again. And uh, yesterday I hit Smoky Quartz, which is oh, another wow. protect. That's not a nice one, that one. You can't see. It's a shame. Hang on. Yeah. That's a nice one. That's another protective stone. Again, you know, when I'm when I feel I can't ground at home, I take off and go out to the bush. This is another nice one. You can't see it very well. There, but it's another smoky, which is a nice one. But yes, that was interesting. I got lost again. <laughs> My GPS takes me way out in the middle of nowhere. But that was interesting. Um, it's interesting how I'm being drawn to the protective areas. Like even the sapphire, sapphires, you know, areas, there's citrine areas, there's all sorts of different areas. Both times when I've really needed grounding, I've ended up in the middle of nowhere lost in protective stone areas, which is nice. I like it. <laughs> yeah. but interesting you know where they send me the great spirits of protection because just so sometimes it, this energy that's coming through now because we've got the lion's gate opening up which is kind of from about three days ago the main energy coming through is on the 8th of the 8th um, it's full on re beautiful beautiful energy I love the Lionsgate energy because I love figure eights, you know, infinity, that kind of thing. So I really like that type of energy. Um, today I did a card for the show and the deer came up <clears throat> and it symbolises instinctual energy, independence, regeneration. Um, graceful, swift and elusive. The deer has symbolised the powers in nature that are not easily subdued. A deer's antlers which are shed and regrown each year are specifically associated with regeneration and renewal. A swift deer with golden antlers was sacred to the Greek goddess Artemis, whose realm was the wilderness and instinctual untamed things. A deer is also a symbol that summons individuals to a calling or a journey. It has frequently appeared in legends and myths as a creature which lures a hunter or knight into the wilderness. In the legend of King Arthur, a deer leads Sir Gawain, into the wood to begin his adventures. And here am I lost in the middle of nowhere, you know. Right. It's pretty beautiful. I like the animal cards. But uh, other than that, um, the, that show that we did a couple of weeks ago yeah. with the physics and the string theory and everything, um, I felt I needed to talk about that a little bit because um it can it can bring a need for support um because when you realize click what was going on what goes on and how we're all unified and all of that as far as string theory goes um and trauma 
if people have been traumatized a lot and it goes through their ancestors all the way back now that you kind of realize that with this string theory it can be really really upsetting um it's it's a it's like being smacked in the head um you i feel a lot of people will need support um in a healing sense because of this um and it, but on a positive, like it's all positive, but as far as healing goes, like I'm a healer, um, the the importance of the string theory, like I, I'm not getting into it, don't worry, everyone. <laughs> but when you realise things, you can go back and see how cycles can be broken. And if you're the one that has just clicked on to all of this, then you can break the cycle of abuse or whatever's been going through all the ancestors or all the way back to the beginning of time. When you do that, it's very, very difficult. Um, you need support. You need someone to talk to. Um, you need to know that not, you know, things aren't your fault. Things can be brought through from centuries ago that haven't been cleansed up or, um, or the cycle hasn't broken so as a healing tool the realization of the this theory is very important as a healing tool um, and I think it's really important that people realize that they it's gonna hurt and it's gonna hurt bad um, you really need support um, to depending on your family like some some lines are not great you know um but the realization that you can that you're you know you've clicked onto this is such a you know that's why i'm so upset um because you can break the cycles and it, that's it then the string continues on then again but the vibration is now a, a beautiful um clean positive vibration i felt i had to say that because people were going to need help they really are like i'm pretty strong you know everybody says oh you're strong you can handle anything kath you know ha ha uh, yeah okay but it doesn't mean i don't hurt and that realization it was like being beaten up like the and but once I realized what was going on and I was able to understand it on a healing sense and a um you know heart sense so it's in a way it's an honor to be able to break the cycles to get the vibration back on track but I felt that was important to say because like talk about it don't you know make sure you've got people around you that uh, can deal with trauma uh, PTSD that you need people with you to be able to you know help you in this situation it's full on um, and then that th like that's a beautiful thing it's like it, it's all beautiful you know all of it um, but then on the other side of it this other thing clicked in my head years ago people weren't into crystals um and then they became used and abused in my world um you know when people are vulnerable and people try and make money out of the vulnerable it was very right. similar with the crystals way back but what happened on earth everyone they're stripping them all you know like you don't reap and pillage this was a very similar like this reminded me of the care that needs to be taken you know with collective things because the same with the crystals you know like they were put there for a reason by you know our great spirits insulation would be one of my guesses you know and beauty because like they're all the beautiful energy colors you know so we don't want any of that vulnerability being um you know abused when everybody comes to this realization 
or if they do or if they don't, doesn't matter, you know, because all the other people around are caring for those people anyway. But I'm just hoping that it doesn't turn into the similar thing as the crystals. That got me on that track. Then um, the AI business that everybody's talking about, um, you know me, I'm ex-information security analyst. I think, you know, my whole career was in protecting data. To be able to protect data, you have to have physical protection as well, you know, to protect that data, storage, access, all of that. So um, I ended up getting onto the forensic heads <laughs> because you know how I do my reports? They're pretty kind of, I don't know, forensically the uh, logic forensic logic so i thought i wonder what's going on in the forensic world so i contacted these head chiefs of this forensic school and i asked them you know how are they dealing with um including this on their reporting system oh boy i thought i was going to get slammed you know because these are the top boys you know head boys and um I, I explained myself, which I know I'm not very good at. Um, I said, you know, I do cold cases and when I'm doing a description, in some cases I'm coming up with a description that I did, just doesn't make sense. You know, no hair, no facial fur, you know, the, I can't get a clear eye colour. Um, and I said, what, do you, what is the forensic world doing in their reporting system, you know, as far as cases go? Hey, Kelly. And... Um, Everyone was like death, dead silence for a little bit. And then they came back to me and they said, yep, you're right. We are going to have to update, hey, Chanel, all of that side of things, you know, to include uh, extras, you know. So that was good. I thought that was a plus because it's changing so quickly and yeah. it's so dangerous. Did you hear about those, um, the law cases over your way where um, – they have the the A's. They're suing the AI company that produced something or other. But these two, these AIs were they're reading books. Guess what they were reading? This is what this is why I contacted the forensic people because I was getting a bit upset. You know, they were reading paranormal books. Oh, were they? Oh, yeah, and I'm thinking, oh, that's nice, new language for them, great, you know. So I could understand what, why it wasn't to me just the fact that um, they shouldn't have been reading these, like they're turning them into audios. The, the, fact, the thing that got me upset, I'll keep my language under control, um, was the fact that they're learning these this kind of language, you know, like <laughs> I wasn't happy about that. But I don't know what will happen with that law case. But it's getting interesting. Very interesting. It's, it's, it's something, I'm, I'm telling you. It is. And then um, on the protection side of it, I was watching your show with Old Bear. He's beautiful. Mm -hmm. He's so good because I, I love clean, clear intention. And, and everything he was saying, I'm going, whoa, yes, yes, yes. You know, being the alpha out there and um, you don't do this and you don't. I love that practicality of intent. I love that. I found that was really, really good. Excellent show. Excellent show. Everyone should watch that one if you haven't seen it. Such a yeah, good show. Yeah, he, uh, he doesn't mess around. No, nah, I love that. So somebody just sent me a message on my phone. Uh, so the uh, anointing oil, uh, the reason why I do not sell that, it is so expensive, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very expensive. I mean, this little bottle is probably 25 or 30 bucks, my cost. So nice that's bottle. why, yeah, that's why I don't sell it. I use it just for personal use and, and stuff. So, yeah. I still have visions of it, whoever it was that's with a blaster all over the house. Oh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, I mean, I, I've done that a few times. But in a comic sense, you know, like yeah. if someone was, you know, a great animated comic 
thing. It's so funny. I often think of that. Yeah, you, you should have seen me a few times doing that in the studio with with bottles of holy water. Yes. <laughs> when, when I when I when I first did the first cleansing uh, last week, a week and a half ago, uh, I was reading the prayer, and I was actually having problems reading. I was stuttering. I was so scared. And I was like, you know, it says in the Bible 365 times, fear, fear not, right? Fear me not and uh, fear not. And and it's just like, I, I, I just couldn't get the words out. So, and, uh, but I, I did it over three times. Uh, I said the prayers numerous times and it, and it actually worked. And uh, I had yeah. some sessions with the dolls. And uh, the the activity subsided quite a bit. I still have it, but not as bad. Yeah. Uh, but once again, on the last show, my light turns off. And to turn my light off, you have to touch it. It's yep. a sensor. And it's one of those ones where you can touch it and slide your finger. And then whatever your finger goes, it, it senses it. And it goes brighter and dimmer. Yeah. And uh, and it and it turned off. Then when that turned off, my 75 inch TV turned on. I was like. That that one had me rattled also. That one. That's the reason I went out into the bush the next day. Um, And I felt very worried. Oh, when um, the desk went kaboom. Oh, no, that one. I'm over all that one. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm at peace with that. 100 percent especially what old old bear said and what um rob rob and jen said i feel totally at peace with all of that totally yeah you know? um but no uh my saying from an information security perspective and i have this pretty much with all my life if you leave that front door open expect visitors and make sure once that visitor goes, you close the door. Otherwise, you're not going to be grounded. You know, like you really have to be careful. You, and you know, it's not funny, <laughs> as we know. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, that was a bit of a worry. But interesting, because of the intent again. I thought was interesting because when you cut off the intent. You know, like if you go, oh, yeah, right, oh, whatever, you know. I noticed as soon as the intent was cut off on one end, it stopped on one end. Mm -hmm. And and one of the other people was saying that, um, you know, like with energy lines, if you've got a, uh, what do you call it, a trans-intercontinental line, you know, that you may have going from one end of Earth to the other that connects, as soon as you're in that same intent, you, you're connected. But if you cut that intent off, I found that very interesting, very interesting. Because without everyone glued, you know, and the one, if you cut it off and just, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it stopped. Right, know? right. I thought that was interesting too because that's a good way. If you know, if you, if that is right and correct, I reckon that's Hello, a good, Emily. Welcome to the show. good way of, um, Sorting that one out, hey, Emily. Yeah. But yeah, they, we always have good, interesting shows. Ah, uh, um, Michelle is trying to get on, but she can't get on. Can you send I her the don't link? See her. Will you send her the link, please? I don't, I don't see her in the background at all. We've had a bit of a hard week there. Let's see here. We're coming, Michelle. <laughs> Let's see here. And let me find her name. And there we go. There she is. She's got the link. All right. Oh, that's good. She'll come now. But yeah, but. Uh... But I love how all of the shows are connected and every show you're learning more and more. But I'm really loving the the new understandings, and they're all connected, you know, because it's all energy, it's all vibrations, you know, it's all frequencies. But I'm finding that really good because of the the knowledge shared is the knowledge gained, you know, like it's a 
wisdom. It's really right. good. I right. like that. And because of all the knowledge out there, you get, it's like these guys that are coming on and the ladies, they are amazing. Like, yeah. <laughs> Eat know, your you chocolate to, biscuit. You just didn't want to see me today. No, we did. I don't no, know what happened. No, I haven't got a chocolate biscuit, so I'll be in a bad mood. Oh, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> are you? And I was trying to watch you on the on the live, but it just keeps dropping in and out. Uh oh, that's not good. Yolanda <laughs> says hello, Michelle. Hello, Yolanda. Hello, I made it. I've been here for half an hour, but I couldn't get on. I couldn't like switch over, and then I saw the message, and then maybe I typed the um, link up incorrectly. Don't know. Or maybe oh, well. they just wanted to get rid of my blabbing on first and then they brought you on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are put in there. I know you just don't want to see me. <laughs> I'm like, hello. No, that's, not true. <laughs> that's never untrue. <laughs> I was um, just um, was, I was hello, standing stones. I um the energy's weird at the moment, like really weird. Uh I thought I I heard you saying that and I'm yeah, like I don't know what's going on, but something's happened in the last couple of days. Yep. The um, yeah. Lions Gate opened up and then we had the end of the 7-7. But um, the other day I was dousing and within five minutes, or it was I had to recalibrate like 10 times in five minutes because it was way off. Like it wouldn't settle down. Um, thanks, Yolanda. Wow. Um, Did you see that? Uh -uh. What happened? Uh, 4540. It looked like a smoke ring flew in front of Cat, right in front of her. Oh. Yeah, it, was, it looked like a, a weird smoke ring. Oh, wow. It, it just... looked like it had like a, a hollow wing or something. Yeah. It was about, oh, it was about this size. And oh, it wow. just flew like right in front of you. Like, I never like look at myself. I no. Nah. <laughs> it wasn't the phoenix rising from the ashes, was it? Bloody hope so. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> In a positive way. <laughs> do you ever go back and watch this when I say this, or you never do? Um, sometimes I do, but I don't see them quick enough. I try to pause it. I I saw the fairy. I see. I told fairy. you. Yeah, that's unreal. I haven't seen a fairy like that. Like you see the the white kind of orby ones, but not a fairy. It I had know. wings and legs and a yes, dress. Yes, it and did. Yeah. Yes, that's beautiful. Yeah, and people tell me they don't exist. I'm like, ah, whatever. I've got well, yeah. fairy things all around me in here. <laughs> yeah, I've got to have everything love. covered. That's why they love it. Me too. It was just weird to have it right in front of you. So. Yeah, I missed it. I was looking at the comments. Yeah, and I look at you when you speak to me, Gris. And if Michelle's speaking, I look at Michelle. So I don't really look at me much. Hi, Leanna. <laughs> <laughs> Better late yeah. than never, huh? That's yeah, good. Still freezing down your way? Um. Yeah, yeah, Yolanda, it was it was like uh, so. If you look at Cat with the dark blue, uh, hold your arms back up, Cat. Now it was now it would now right, you're right there, right where's your elbow? It right there. It came up and it went like it was weird. It looked like a hollowed out jellyfish, basically is what it looked like, but like a smoke ring almost. Wow. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's so. what are you sending smoke signals about, Kath? Yeah, help, really? Help, help me. <laughs> help. <laughs> no, I think it's because I was talking about the figure eight and um, the lion's gate <sighs> opening. No, man, if we go back and that was a figure eight, that would blow my socks off. <laughs> Me too, but I think that's possibly why, because I, you it's know, I love the, the symbol. The symbol. That would be crazy if that was the Infinity Eight. I'm getting confirmation. I'm actually getting confirmation of that. What makes you think the Lionsgate's opening now? 
Um, it usually opens about a week earlier than the 8th of the 8th because it's the 7th or the 7th energy finishes around the 23rd of July. Okay. Yep. As far as I'm no whiz at this, but I always look forward to the 8th of the 8th because I, I love figure eights and infinity. And to me, that's everything. I, I really like the whole idea of, you know, infinity, I guess. And And now that I'm learning physics... The feedback system on the strings, same thing. Infinity. <laughs> yeah. That would be mm. wild if it was the infinity symbol. I reckon. That'd blow me up. Which is Yeah, not... that'd be pretty that'd be pretty cool. cool. <laughs> yeah. Especially that'd with fairies. <laughs> I've always <laughs> seen one other fairy on a show, and that was with La La Bright. She gets and so I about much... and I about speaking of her, she just she just jumped on and said hello all, and it flew in front of her. I'm like, are like, yeah, we got fairies. I'm like, it just flew in front of her, and wings and legs. <laughs> so I think yeah. was there last time when the fairies came. I think so. Crazy yeah, eggs, right? Lala, you just missed a figure eight or a, a smoke ring or a hollowed out jet. I don't know what it was. How big was Infinity it? Infinity symbol. It, about about that. It was about that big. Yeah, wow. and it flew right in front of you and just. So. I heard you talking about people needing help and everything. I've just pulled cards out here on while you were talking about that, and there's definitely some sort of um, end of some sort of phase. Yeah, just when it happened, yeah. and that there is an awakening coming for a lot of people yeah. that you're going to need to look at stuff with a different perspective again, and definitely you're going to need mentorship or seek, you know, 100%. Um, you know, higher learning, yeah, because yeah. it's really hard. Yeah. Like, I'm tough, and after that show, I was whacked like for a week. I, you know, really, really disturbed. Upset. My head, my head was reeling. It's like, yeah, I know. Can you imagine what mine's like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, my God, it yeah. was fascinating. Um, but I read yeah. there was a video that came out. I woke up one morning, bang, and I'd been worried about three things that had the th things that we discussed earlier on in the show, I was really concerned about those things. Anyway, when I woke up, all of a sudden, the first I hit Facebook, this video comes up and it's explaining, it, it was explaining everything neurologically that I was trying to, because I knew how upset I was and the, how hard it was. Like, um, like I'm tough, I can handle things, you know, I'm okay. But other people, the strength of the new knowledge and the realisation and the understanding of what, how it's all connected was so, so strong. Um, but in a healing sense, beautiful, so positive because that's when you can cut the circle, you know, and stop things happening. When you're thinking, once you realise, oh, it's not my fault, it wasn't my fault, straight off, you've got healing. You know, like if it's being passed on through centuries and centuries up until now, you know, it's someone's breaking the cycle. And the cycles that we're breaking at the moment are so huge. And that, like the energy involved is so massive that people are really going to need guidance, pure heart guidance. No funny business, you know, like all the vulnerable people out there with PTSD or RAP, that all that business, this is going to really hurt for a good week. Um, definitely need guidance and only the best. Pure of heart, no funny business. You know, it's a serious, it's serious. It really, really has been upsetting me, you know, um, because it's so important as a healing um it's a healing realization. I totally agree, Michelle. Yeah, there are. Um, well, scientists, you know, do have a scientific thing where the matrix of the brain, and they call them gestalt, where yeah. there's these. So you were talking about string and 
and that there was like virtually a knot in that string stopping basically it's a roadblock um yep. all of this stuff is created in our subconscious brain in our memories um so there's definitely a linking up of those theories throughout different um, modalities about those gestalts in the brains and that they are you are able to release them or remove them um yep if if you're willing to go there but it has to happen at the subconscious level as well yeah that's like, why it hurts so much like yeah it's like you know when you undo one of those tight knots you can't undo it at first and then you fiddle about and so there's all this different and then threads come off it depending on what kind of rope it is or you know what, what you're tying or what, what, with, tool, yeah. or what tool you're using to get it undone yeah yeah you know because because that can either cause more damage you know you might yeah. accidentally slit some of it or you know yeah. you might get your finger caught in a section but then and then when you release it and it's pew, so yeah. there's a reaction you know like um like if you cut an elastic band that's you know connected from here to me say you cut it then when it when it flings back it's like you know it's full on it's the same as when you're breaking attachments same thing um a lot of people will get a terrible neck like whiplash and that's that elastic band going you know straight back in so that you're becoming unattached like it well, there, is, there is theories out there that um the cutting of cords is actually a dangerous practice um and shouldn't really be done but and that's been a, the method uh, you know of really you know cutting cords and releasing attachments and things like that but um unless it's done absolutely correctly it can actually yeah yeah, yeah like, and you know, if you're trying to cut cords with somebody that like say you know a relation in an ex relationship or an ex or something like that and you cut the cords um they're going to feel that Yep. And basically what happens, you cut the cords, they feel it, and they reattach them. They come back stronger. So it's not the right way to do it because yeah, right. trauma is still there. The trauma bond is still there. Yep. Yeah. I, yeah. It's complicated, it, but. It is. It, but that's kind of energetically, that's, you can see why it happens. And like mm. with this, um, trauma on the string say you've got more than one knot all the way along going right back through all your ancestors you know right to the beginning of time each knot you undo then you've got another reaction further up the line to the next knot that you undo and then again and again and again that's why it's so powerful this new it's not you know it's full on it's a beautiful thing but a very hard thing you know at first but once you get them undone you know and the the vibration the frequencies corrected or is better than it was it, then you get this drainage so you're so drained you know because it's a big operation what you what you're doing you know um then that like i reckon there's a week of tears and needing full-on help and then the week after um full on you're fully drained for another week maybe two weeks you know until all that energy settles down this is just my hypothesis um until the energy just kind of settles down and you can chill again so i reckon week three um you're starting to come out and things start to pick up then which is at the moment good because we've got our eight eight coming up which is well, going to help all people with this. There used to be the way, like, um, in healing, that sometimes if you you could create a healing crisis for a person. So it was very important to actually check on that person in a couple of days if you've been doing that type of trauma work with them because there is a healing crisis that can occur with removing those types of things. Um Recently, I found another way to do it, and it's so much better. And it actually, the client comes out of it feeling lighter and brighter. Um, and as long as there's some self care goes on after that, like drinking lots of water and allowing the new 
stuff to integrate, yep. um, there's, there's not a problem. But, yes, there are some things out there that people are doing that does create that healing crisis this is what exactly what you're describing. Yeah. There needs to be. And it's no good saying, are you okay? No, it's not good enough. Sorry. You need to be asking a bit more than, are you okay? You know, like, okay, are you okay is not good enough. It, no, because that's a yes or no answer where, you know, you need to be asking a, how are you feeling? Exactly. Yeah. And if you say, most people say, yeah, I'm okay. That's bullshit. Sorry for the language, but that's not. Nah. They're just saying, yeah, sure, I'm okay. I don't, it, you need to dig deeper. <laughs> yeah. They're not okay. Anyone can say, yeah, I'm fine. Oh, yeah, I'm okay. You know, yep. Yeah, because a lot of people don't want to talk about what's really going on or, you know, you don't want to um, bring anyone else down with whatever's going on. So a lot of gentle care needs to be taken with more than are you okay. It's not good enough. Yeah. So what's that about a creature from? I don't know. I was getting ready to ask about that. Rebecca, can you tell that. us about that? Because I don't watch the news, so... Um, oh, I didn't see that either. And I heard everything's Mexico at the moment. <laughs> Very interesting because it's super duper power source down there in Sonora. Rebecca, don't leave us hanging. Yeah, no. Sorry, I haven't been watching that. News. Hey, Tiffany, welcome to the show. So, yeah, I like to know about any goblins and goblins and monsters and aliens. and <laughs> <laughs> it's some sort of mythical sprite. Wooded or... elf, yeah. she says. Yeah. A goodie? Little people, the little people of Mexico Mayan legend. No, I haven't seen that. Why would he say that? I wouldn't be surprised. There's going to be a lot of stuff come out that they know about, have known about for such a long time, and they're suddenly going to start um, releasing this information. Yeah, they need the good guys out there as well. I've even lost track of who the latest president is. It says it protects, um, you said to protect villages and areas that, and then still exist to this day. They say if you build a small house, they will look after your land for seven years. Seven. Oh, I got chills. <laughs> That's a good thing. And that they'll help crops grow and call in the rain and guard your land at night. You know, when, um, have you, sorry, I'm interrupting. Mm -mm. When um, we lived in Mexico for a while, and when I was about 12, and we stayed at this motel, Costa de Oro it was called, in uh, Curedad Obregón, and uh, <laughs> we were out mucking around in the swimming pool, my little brother and I, and it, you never get rain down there. Like, it's very rare you get rain. And I'm mucking around, dancing about being a twit as usual, you know, fooling about outside this swimming pool, and it started to rain. And then three days later, I was mucking around again and the rain came again. Ooh. Um, and uh, they called me the rain, like the rain lady. I was 12 I've years seen old. people that look like that, Grace. Sorry, yeah, Kath. Yeah, did look evil. <laughs> I've seen people that resemble that. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I kind of blanked that bit. Uh, <laughs> I was kind of. Uh -uh. Um, very no very gnome-like. Um, as yeah. in real gnome, not the garden gnome, the real forest gnome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it was interesting because and they, at that time in um, Mexico, my little brother had real super blonde curly hair and everyone used to touch him on the head all the time because they have a belief, I'm not 100% on what it is, but they all wanted to touch the blonde hair, you know, for luck and good energy and stuff like that. But at the time... The guy that owned the motel, he was a non-Mexican. And 
Oh, it's just my old brass one. Um, I've got a blue one. Oh, that's a pretty one. Yeah, it's blue halo. It's beautiful. That's the that's straight that's into the penny, really isn't it? Hey, the halite, isn't that straight into the best yeah. for psychic? Yeah. Yeah, it's, and the best, it's the best one I've had. But no, it's blue halide. It looks like um that. But I've, I've got a selenite one and um the smoky quartz one that you gave me and a rose quartz one and Hey Michelle, smoky. I, I one. had to go grounding the other day. Speaking Did you find of, that? Yeah, and this one. You're always finding those. They find me. <laughs> and then I was Sorry, Jill, Michelle and I are into our rocks. And this, the other time I went, I got lost and I needed super duper grounding. I ended up in the tourmaline fields surrounded by tourmaline. Wow. You, can't see you, didn't get, well. you didn't get lost, you got found. Oh, I like being lost. I like it. <laughs> but anyway, the blue highlight works the best for me. My, I find it the most accurate one that I have. Yeah. Um, yeah, but different ones do different jobs. Yeah, I same. I have different yeah. ones for mapping with a finer point. And then I've got a heavy one for outside stuff. Oh, I don't know if I should tell you about all that. <sighs> yeah. Some interesting things have been happening in the Hacienda. And Stingray's in the house. Yes. <laughs> I can't see any comments at all. I forgot my barrel. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> 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 um, it's a bit warmer today. The sun's sort of coming and then going and coming and going. A bit like the internet. I was yeah. like when I do the crime show in the morning, I, I'm very sorry, everybody, but my house has no heating and it's like minus 15 inside. I go outside to get warm. So when I do the crime show, I'm in bed fully rugged. I feel embarrassed, but I can't do it anywhere else because it's so cold. Wow. Yeah. yeah, no, no, I'm getting too old for that shit. Um, Same crap. here. Same here. Yeah. <laughs> it hurts. Oh, my bones hurt. <laughs> anyway, they can't do anything about it. Just wait for spring to come. We've got all the jonquils out at the moment. Mm. Yeah, maybe Kath can. Um, Standing Stones is playing with his um, pendulum. But, yes, you've got a. You do have to um, yeah. program it so because everyone's energy is different. Yep. And also so, remember, if you're dousing for the Northern Hemisphere, it won't be the same for the Southern Hemisphere. If I'm dousing in Syria, it's a totally different direction. And um, But lately, down here, it doesn't matter what's going on because the energy feels to be united and I'm recalibrating, within five minutes, it can change. So every question I was asking the other day, I had to keep recalibrating because it was like all the electromagnetics were just... It wouldn't settle down. Um, but we shouldn't important. say that. Jeez. Why? Well, if that's the case, because down here, um, our energy goes anti-clockwise, right, down the drain? It's anti clockwise, isn't it? Yeah. I so know. Yeah, yeah. Is, is the way that the energy runs, and Northern Hemisphere it runs clockwise. So you have to be very careful because anything like that is like an opening or closing of a vortex. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying that the energies are all mixed up, that might explain what the crap that's going on on the I farm so. because it's opening vortexes that. Because there's all these mixed signals. Like my cows are really weird right now and I can't put my finger on it. It's almost static. I'm finding it like energetically there's, it's, um, I've seen people that aren't grounding at the moment and they're walking around in a daze, um, total days um i was watching someone the other day and i could see clearly she was still off with the fairies and or wherever and i wanted to say something but i i couldn't 
Um, yes, Melinda, that's true. That's what's supposed to happen. The water goes in a different direction in your hemisphere than it does in our hemisphere. Yeah. And yes. moon, moon as well, you know, it's affecting it. Like the northern hemisphere, what we're seeing, what they're seeing, different sides, I think. Mm. Yeah. Um, but definitely because um, you really have to watch your calibrating at the moment. 100%. And not just, you know, if you, every question, test it out again. And um, when you, I found also, you take it right away from anything that's magnetic, you know, any electromagnetics at all in the house or go outside and do it. it everything seems to be electrically overcharged. If that, if that, I don't know if it, if that's possible, but that's what it feels like because it's static. And um, the other thing I've noticed is synchronicity. Whoa. Yesterday and the last three days on some of the shows, I'd put a comment and then the person would say what I was talking about after it. The, the synchronicity at the moment is full on. You need to act, take notice of it immediately and act. Trust your, int your intuition immediately and act. It's really fast and important. So trust, I guess, is coming up. Major trust. Huh. Well, I'd be careful because any negative thoughts can be manifested. Yeah, so you've got to quickly change your head. I've been saying to a friend of mine, she keeps saying these things. I just keep saying, delete, delete, delete. I said, every time you say anything negative, self-talk or anything like that, you quickly say delete, 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 you know, get out of that headspace because of that synchronicity and because it's happening so fast, like it's really important to um, try not to go down any negative self-talk roads. Rabbit holes. <laughs> <laughs> get lost in the rabbit, Warren. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And, but there seems to be a lot of people um, on the opposite side that uh, know how to um, zone on in really fast on the vulnerable, I've found, which is another area of worry at the moment. Strong. So we need to all look mm. after each other at the moment. That's, that's all. And we need to ask clearly, are you really okay? Talk to me if you, you know, and if you need someone to talk to or do you want a hug or you've got to be real careful with everyone at the moment. Like, no, I just want to punch somebody. Yeah, oh, yeah, like <laughs> I'm being having myself here. <laughs> but, yeah, the other day I found out that these twits with um, animal insurance over here have been knocking off animals to first they get their pet insurance. I was livid. That was another reason I had to go bush because to calm down because I knew I was not in a good frame of mind. I was so angry. Um, what they're doing is they, they're getting their pet insurance. Then they're going and getting the animals. And at the moment there's heaps and heaps of dogs and that are getting stolen over here, especially around here. And um, <clears throat> what they're doing is there's a little clause on the pet insurance <clears throat> and it says... Um, that you have to do certain things, you know, as far as the treatment goes. Um, and what they're doing is they know what that is and they're not following through with the treatment and then they're claiming the insurance. I was furious, absolutely furious. But anyway, I've been, I've dealt with that. <laughs> well, you know, calm as a bitch, so... All I can say is, you know, what comes around goes around. So, yeah, faster the better. <laughs> well, yeah, things are speeding up in that in that area as well. So, yeah, <laughs> not good. Uh -uh. It was good to um, talk to the girls. Was it yesterday or the day before? I've been a bit shell shocked after little babykins, but that yes, was Jan. Yeah, and I haven't any answers yet, although oh, right. I did get some stuff drop in. Um, thank you, Yolanda. Um, I did have something drop in last night and it was 
weird in its presentation in my woo-woo way, but um, it was almost a confirmation because I felt something happened to her heart because her lungs filled up with fluid and I couldn't, um, I couldn't deal with it. It was so aggressive, whatever caused it. I, I couldn't, there was nothing I could do. I threw everything I had in the Same. in my toolkit at it and I could not. And she literally drowned in her own lung fluid and it was upsetting to watch and, and but I knew that it was, I knew I was losing her and I just, it was terrible. You're not going to cry on me, are you? No, you'll have to belt, be quiet shortly. Um, um, <laughs> I when we were doing I've already it, cried enough for all of us, so that's just let let's just get that out yeah, of the way. Yeah, yeah. I'm going into business mode to because if I start again, I I won't be able to stop. Um, when when I was Michelle anyway, and I were in the sky at sunset, and I was standing there looking at the cows, and I was looking at her mum. And I was, you know, just apologising, saying, I'm so sorry, I, I just couldn't, you know, because my heart is just shattered. And I, I'm i just like, I didn't take your baby away and kill it. I just didn't. It just, I, I, you know, I'm so sorry that this happened. And then something said to me, turn around. And I turned around and it was sunset. And there was this gigantic cloud and it was this massive dragon and it had a heart in its mouth. And I just went, holy crap. <laughs> and I didn't have yes. my phone with me. I couldn't even take a photo. That's so frustrating. But it's things so like that happen to me all the time. This has got a cross on it, on the side of it. Has it? Yep. The clear cross, you can't see it because of the light here. But that it's on the side. You can't quite see it. But... It was hard, like it was really hard. All I picked up, like, because I had my hand mostly on her, you know, on the front, you know, heart area, and then um, I was getting the pain down on the left side. And but usually I can pick up stuff. That, but I kept picking up this, like a little green, this same color as this, this green ball, <clears throat> and. It, as she was trying, I don't know if what was going on, but the end of it opened up and this stuff started squirting out the end of it. Like the round thing got a hot, came like that, and then the stuff started squirting out of it. But it could only get, like the, it could only get a quarter of it out. Maybe that was the same time that that was happening. I don't know because it was like totally, you know, I thought I was dealing with hypothermia um, until during the night. I mean, because I was up I had every two hours, I was up giving her electrolytes and, and stuff like that and checking on her. I had her in a heater. She's in, I still haven't cleaned up the kitchen. My kitchen's full of hay <laughs> 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 where I put her on the floor. <laughs> And I keep walking past it going, I've got to clean that up. Um, <laughs> I've actually got a visitor coming tonight. God knows what they'll think. Oh, God, that's where you're sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> In the, the cradle. <laughs> it's a cra crazy life of mine. But anyway, mm. um, yeah, for those who, who were listening, it was like I had a baby calf born and then, you know, she got sick really quickly, like collapsed and there was no rhyme nor reason for it. So, but it was interesting, yeah, that I did, that I had that thought, you know, it had to be her heart, you know, there's no other reason it wasn't pumping the the fluid out of the lung, you know, and it was clear fluid. It wasn't, and because I thought pneumonia, but it, there was no colour to it or anything like that, no smell, it was just clear. And I was like, what is going on here? This is just so weird. Um. And there's another cow is due to carve, and she was due to carve any day, and she's gone off the boil, would you believe? And she's not looking very happy, and I'm looking at it going, what is going on with this? Um, and it's almost like she knows something, and it's almost like she stopped the process of, of having the calf. So whether the energies, the land energies are not good at the moment, but um, 
interestingly, the shamans that are on the land here, there's three of them, and ask them what was going on, you know, can you do something about this? And they said there was nothing they could do about that and that they were very sad, but they they started singing. So, and we got a downpour, like we got deluged that night. Cleansing. Yep. And I woke up the next morning and walked out and this is the, the day after and I went, we've just had a cleansing, a major cleansing. That is like amazing. Um, it felt amazing. Um, but yet they're still and they were still singing. They're still singing. Okay. So something they're trying they're trying to do something to counteract whatever it is. Um, yeah, which is out of our control, I believe. Yeah. I yeah. kept getting stars, like stars everywhere and crosses everywhere. Everything I'm touching, finding, there's always a star in it. Yeah, does, that, does that mean anything to you? Like a, a star, is that like, to, does to it me, have any, um, revel, you know? To me it means that there's another bright, beautiful energy that has come about and added to the already beautiful energies. Whenever I get the stars like that, I think of upstairs and you're getting beautiful light shining down over us, you know? Yeah, because so, the star in the tarot is about that um, guidance, about being on the right path, um, yeah. making right decisions, um, being led to the right decisions. Um, so the star definitely has, you know, a massive meaning there. Um, Just like also getting... with the star, the star in the, in the tarot, is the lady with the water jug? She's pouring, pouring the water out of two jugs in the original. I think it is the original tarot, but she's definitely pouring out of a jug. And there's that all that water is going back to the river, so it's all going back to the same source, but there's different paths. So even though it's all going back to the same source. Each path is different and the path you choose will dictate the journey that you're actually going to have. Yeah. Yeah, so Eurekis is a star that illuminated the location of the baby Jesus. That's, yeah, the star is very, a very big sign. And the star of Bethlehem and, like, to me when someone goes upstairs, you know, I think of, I like to think that uh, it's another light shining over us that's a good thing you know it's Can giving us anything? more light we call that the blanket show down here not the blanket street yeah <laughs> what goes on yeah. the standing, make us laugh please. <laughs> <laughs> what happens in the blanket street <laughs> i wasn't gonna say nothing on that one there Love the light, standing stone. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely, brother. <laughs> um, well, what about the cross? Because that kind of has different meanings too. Like you've got, you know, well, this could be it could be could be resurrection. It could be um, persecution. Mm, I only go in the positive. Like this one's like a. Um, star shape not so much i wish you could see it yeah not that's so the blanket much. story not the blanket street i don't know i just like stars and i think they're positive things and you think of they lead you they guide you they help you see the way um it's um you're not losing someone forever that you can always look up and know that they're with you or you know don't you're gonna make me cry quick say something funny I'm naked. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's time to pray. Cross, pray. You need to pray. Get on your knees. You know, you missed it. I held this up earlier. Oh, did you? Oh, sorry. And, and my monitor went black. I was like. <gasps> Is that and what happened? Yes. I held Is it up on? and my monitor went black. And I was like, I you got to be joking. 
I was trying to watch because I couldn't get on, and it just kept. I just had to keep re. Yeah. It just kept blacking out. It's like, what is going on there? Yolanda, I took the wheel before you did. <laughs> hey, Michelle, do you know what does this? <laughs> the lichen. No, there's like the markings. Here, let me blow your up. Aren't they just age? Um, I don't think so. You looking, it looks like you've got some woodworm there too with the tracking. Yeah, I think that's what might be. Oh, that one, the middle. I can't do it back to front. You've got some grub that tracking one. there. But all you're those... talking about the and stuff. That's just growth rings. Yeah. What sort of what sort of tree was it? Uh, I think it was a gum. There was wattle around the area as well. I ended yeah. up lost the other day. I was telling Grizz and the gang that I got lost in this tourmaline hill and it was in a, like a circle and all these white cockies, hundreds of them, um, all started circling around, squawking. It's so nice. Okay, good. I've changed the subject. Yeah, they do. But the, see, the story of the tree is in that, all those rings. Well, they're usually they're on the inside. There's none. Like the inside's not... Like the outside. That's a branch, though, not the trunk. Yeah. 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 So it would work, yeah. It, it shot sure up it so, good. like, I had to pick it up straight away. It was like, pick this up, so I did. It looks like a good piece to make a wand out of. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. And um, also I found um, this energy center in the backyard. Um, kind of, I was fooling around with my dousing rods because I don't do enough with my rods, so I was fooling around out the back with those. Um, I'm not seeing the comments, I ain't seeing anything, just you and your rods. Oh, <laughs> yeah, maybe I shouldn't, <laughs> but yeah, so, um, I ended up finding the centre of it, and then I paste it out with the rods and then I verified it with the pendulum. And um, uh, Lola's in, in the back, Gris, um, and uh, I've ended up with a big circle in my backyard with a, and I've put a big massive crystal term, like uh, generator in the middle. Um, but I don't know much about these sort of things, but I keep getting told I have to put a copper rod in the middle of it. Any ideas why? That's a conductor. Another one. Whoa. <laughs> Copper's a big conductor. That's what they put in to connect ley lines. Um, I know they're highly conductive with electric electricity and stuff. No, highly, highly conductive for ley lines energy, any energy. Okay. Um, so whoever, make sure whoever told you that is of the light and that's for a good reason. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. But when I found a stick, I thought, because they want me to decorate the copper pole, like the, it's about this high, and they want me to decorate it. And I was thinking, you know, of the crystals and stuff like that, and I thought, no, I can't do that because I could start a fire. Um, so I've, I've, I've got a mission to decorate this copper rod. Okay. Um you could use feathers or leather or I'm big on feathers. See? <laughs> I love feathers. Yeah. Um, leather. What else? I was going to use beads and um, just natural stones because I found some really nice little crystals as well, like beautiful little doubly terminated ones. So I was going to add, like, add them stone. like this and then Couldn't dingle dangle them. Couldn't you use grounding stones like dense stones, like ones that don't um, re reflect they, light? They want like, tourmaline everywhere up there. Yeah, tourmaline is a so dense. I've got that up there. Yeah. And I've got white quartz, clear quartz from Kingsgate. It actually comes from Kingsgate. Yeah. What was that question? Sorry. 
So I want to ask Michelle if she can validate this for me. So Nell, did, uh, do you have a family member that just passed not too long ago? And the reason I'm asking that, it seems like I'm getting something that a family member is trying to get your attention. So. It could be, um, it could even be a pet too. Um, flash of white light passing by it is normally a good thing. It's it's a, a good energy. She but, said yeah. 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 So male or female? Did you say female? I just I just I just resonate a family member. That's the only thing I was getting was somebody mm -hmm. was trying to get her attention. Yeah. And it's been so I I know that whoever it is or, or whoever it is, I don't yeah. know your uncle. Uh, has been giving you signs that you're not been paying attention. Uh, yeah. So it's just ramping up. So yeah. uh, just Definitely. let me know that he's been uh, around you. And that's just uh, some acknowledgement for you. So uh, just giving you that information. Uh, I don't know. Uh, sorry, Michelle. Um, maybe no, you no, can no, take it no. over from there. So Yeah, no. Um, how, long, how long ago did he pass over? Uh, it hasn't been that long. Hasn't been that long. I don't think so. No, Coming back in as a white flash. That like that. Melda, how long is it? How, how long has he? How long has he been passed? Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, I didn't think it's been that long. Um, he must have been fairly highly evolved, um, spiritually, to be uh. coming back as a white, you know, with that sort of energy, um, in two weeks. So, um. Melda, you, you got me very off my rocker because usually I don't do that. Usually I do not do a reading. So you picked very up on rare. it. You picked yeah. up on it straight away. So that is really it's, good. That's 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 rare. So yeah. Um something about a challenging situation. He's he, he's trying to any one messages? Week one week today. Wow. So sorry, Nelda. Sorry to hear about that. Yeah. Um, so nothing else, just the white flash. Um, and it feels like you're having a challenging situation. So he's feels like he needs to be around at the moment. So yeah, they'll do that trying to get your attention because they want to say something. It felt like he died. Was it suddenly that Delma that he died? What did he die suddenly? Sorry for the personal question. Because really, right now, he should be over there get, um, healing. Um, so the only reason for him, old age. Old age. Yeah, so, okay, so he was ready to go. So it wouldn't have been a shock for him. Hello, Lauren. Welcome to the show. I'm sorry to hear that, Nelda. Well, obviously, he, he loved you heaps because he left his deck of playing cards. <laughs> there must be a joke between you and the deck of cards, right? Not to be. <laughs> you definitely got something to say. Um, are you thinking about moving? Something about a new home? got fond memories of you too it seems as well so yeah so maybe just um take a moment to like sit and tune in or remember the good memories um as well yeah if it keeps up i would um there is a a, a prayer that you can say to actually move them on if he needs to move on because it's if you know it's okay for him to come back but he needs to like go pass over to the light and to do the stuff that he needs to do there 
um, for his ascension process, heal and ascend, and then he can come back. He was very loved, yeah. Um, I, I feel like he's a highly evolved spirit anyway, um, but um, still, it's don't want him trapped here, you know, on the earthly plane. You want him to be able to go and then so that he can come back. Maybe just want to let her know she's not by herself. Yeah. At this moment in time. And that yeah. he'll always be looking over her. Yeah. Like definitely if they can feel, you know, the grief. I mean, one week means that he's still probably hanging around. He's so worried about everybody so much love for everybody and so worried about everyone that um he hasn't kind of like passed over yet so um, have they had the ceremony yet i call it a ceremony because i can't go the other way i get too upset so i call it a ceremony instead of a you know funeral oh okay I don't quite understand that, but yeah, I don't understand that either. Too now, mm. his daughter did attend the wake or funeral. He must Does that be... mean he must be a dad? I don't. We don't understand the last part. He must be dead. Dad. Maybe the wake was just yesterday or something. Yeah, not sure. Um, and the customs with um, Spanish, Mexican, um, do they have a longer period of uh, spirit Well, you release? figure it, it takes about, you know, uh, three to five, six days for a funeral. You yeah, know. so he's still there. Just letting you know that he's around and yeah. wanting to comfort everybody. So before he goes. Um, but I do get that. He was a very special man anyway. So, well, yeah, well, who, who wouldn't hang around for that? <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he was buried today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Sorry. I still have. It's very hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was, the, the big message there is to remember the good times and to, yes, celebrate his life because he lived a long life. So that is, that is awesome. Yeah. Hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Got another good star up there. Yeah, well, if the celebration, especially, which is a great way to do it. I mean, sure, yes, you're all going to miss him. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, just remember the good times. He wants to be remembered for the good times. It's good when you see things like that when somebody goes, to, just to connect the upstairs and downstairs, you know, and kind of remind you that we're all still together in some form. Yeah, the, the energy goes on and re remembering people keeps them alive as well, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's like we had, I had a, we had a friend here who passed over um, a few months back now um, and he was a very enlightened being. He was a man of the forest and, and all that sort of stuff. You only have to mention his name and he's right there. It's oh, like wow. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Vaya con Dios. Yeah. 
It's yeah. good when you get some form of acknowledgement. Like yeah. when my dad not- went, he used to, he wasn't that affectionate, but he'd kind of pat me on the head kind of thing. And that night I got patted on the head. But then um, when mum went, yeah, the, I don't know, when they, you know, with dementia and that, you kind of say goodbye a lot earlier than when they actually go. So yeah. whether they're lost up there as still, you know, and they don't remember upstairs, I don't know. I don't understand that bit. Um, definitely healing would need to be need to be done, and it may some it takes sometimes it takes longer for the healing to happen, especially when yeah. it's something like that. Um, you could also. You could also send a request or pray that, you know, she goes to the right place um, so that she's not lost. Yeah, she, she's, I did all that. She's with Dad. She's happy. All the dogs are there. But, um, yeah, that side of it's good. Yeah. Emotions are very powerful, um, whether you're on this side or the other side. So, yeah. Um, Perhaps you have some resistance as well, which is blocking that coming through. I'm just looking at what <laughs> you're like just saying. Okay, just shut the door, shut the door on that. <laughs> 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 uh, so, if I had a bottle of tequila, I might have a tequila and celebrate I, with. Give it time. It doesn't mean she didn't care about you or didn't love you. Uh, the, like tw- it was hard. Dementia's hard. The 12 yeah. years. You know, and every you. day, every day they say, yeah, let's change the subject. It, I, it's really hard because cause it's such a long time where you're seeing the spark go out. It's not an, east, an instant, you know. So. <laughs> Why is Grizz naked? I have no idea. Because he's That's trying fine. to cheer us up. <laughs> uh-huh. Standing's looking after us. <laughs> it took a long time for me to get messages from my mum too. Mm. I, I remember on the day of your funeral and going in to see her and I was numb. I didn't I couldn't feel anything. And I think that was more upsetting than anything else. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I, I do I do understand what you're saying, but it did it did happen. And I did get, I did get to talk to her, and do get to talk to her still. So, but it just it took a while, and I think um, I had a traumatic relationship with her um, in my childhood, right. and I think that you know, and even though I thought that we had, you know, healed all that, it, there there was obviously still, you know, resistance there. You know, when you've been hurt. You know, you do tend to put up the walls, so, you know, it's not easy for them to get through. That was another reason that string theory business was so upsetting um, mm. because when I went back through the ancestry of on the women's side of things, um, full on, yep, similar to what you're saying, like, yeah, and that's why I felt kind of honoured and proud that okay i can break this cycle you know and yeah yeah the buck stops with us pretty much if we want it to and by yeah. healing healing it, by doing that we're actually healing the future generation as well so it's not exactly. just about the part it's about healing our children as also yeah and Lauren exactly. and, and yolanda said you're not allowed to cry because they want to cry too <laughs> i'm upsetting everybody i'm sorry yeah. <laughs> I um, either blow your brains out with information or I make you cry. <laughs> yeah, and it says when I see my deceased father in my dreams, he's been in the distance. It's been th- gone. He's been gone thirty-eight years. So yeah, there's reason. I know. I was so upset when my dad went, and I used to see him in a room with other people, like he was in a waiting room, but he he didn't he couldn't see me. He didn't acknowledge me, and I remember that being re- really, really upsetting. So I know what Rebecca's talking about. Um, 
honestly, if you've got some issues with, you know, mothers, fathers, you do need to do some inner work, some healing. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it, it will get easier and getting the messages will be easier. Um because I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, it's when, there's trauma, when there's trauma involved and uh, both sides can be on both sides, it, it really does interfere with the, the connection and the communication. Yeah. And as yeah. it goes back down through so long, like you're going back through, you know, with the ancestry on the string theory, you, you realise how much pain a lot of the, they, everyone has suffered all the way through history. So, like, don't cry. When I did, when I realised <laughs> when I realised all of this, I real I was not crying just for me. So that's why I found it. I find it really important with this healing that will occur. That it's so strong because you're not just crying for yourself. You're crying for your whole string, and when you can um break that cycle that it's there's a lot of tears involved <laughs> All right tears are gifts from gifts from god so you really Cleansing. You shouldn't stop tears from flowing you should yeah. actually release them because it yeah. is actually a gift um yeah, yeah i love the rain <laughs> It's a healing. We stop letting the rain do your job for you. <laughs> no, I'm talking my rain, mate. <laughs> there was enough to sort out a few droughts, that's for sure. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. That's why it's so important to have the support and, you know, not just say, are you okay? Oh, Rebecca. Yeah, that definitely needs to be healed. I mean, that is only going to affect your life here and you want to have a quality life you want to you know you don't want to be still you know hooked into that trauma um it's like a trauma bond it's not fun um and it means that you don't you don't get to have the joy and um experience joy and peace you know like like you really can um and and it's the same for past life stuff as well as the generational stuff you know um, there's hooks and stuff there that, that it can be yeah. released if you're willing to do the, the inner work. Yeah. Yeah. And with this business when you've got, oh, sorry, Brenda. Wow. Bless yeah, all of you that are having these hurting times. Yeah, there's like, a lot of people passing over now. Yeah. And don't be by yourself. Sing out. If you feel like you're alone and you want someone to talk to, sing out. Anytime, like you know, we can help. Yeah, if you forgive or accept, I found you don't have to forgive, um, you can accept the circumstances, and um, that'll make you feel so much better. Just accepting, oh, well, in I shouldn't say this, I was gonna say <laughs> she's a dragon, <laughs> but you know, like if you accept what was then you'll feel so much better you know like whatever it was or wasn't just accept that okay it's finished now then they're upstairs all you know it's now's the beginning of new times you've got to remember that they had trauma too yeah okay and they were only doing what they were taught as well or yep. working with the knowledge they had or working to social um Constriction, yeah. also, yeah. you know, what's expected of them. So, yeah. um, yes, but, you know, that's why I say where the buck stops with you, you can stop it. Yeah, okay. Um, Lauren would like love to know if she had a past life. And look, you can go to people who who uh, look into that for you and can tell you that. But I found the best and the most, um, correct well, not correct, but. Um, accurate way is the clues are in your dreams the clues are in your visions um i remember having a dream and it's the dreams that are like you were there like you're actually there 
Like it feels like you're physically there in the dream. They're past lives. I had a dream about the London fires. I was actually there in the London fires, the big London fires. And I remember at the time going, wow, that was so real. It was, I was literally walking the cobblestones and and everything with all the, the buildings on fire. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. Do you that find, was, Michelle, sorry for interrupting. Hey, Lola, do you find when you have those, oh, my mic's off, the, those full-on dreams that are like reality, that the next day um, it's in your face or it might last for a few days and you get really tired? It's because it's like you've, you've actually lived in that moment in time and, you know, there's the fear or there's what you see or do you get really super tired for a couple of days after that and it won't go away? That's when I find they were the past it's life. Replay, yes. yes, definitely replays. Um, and that's why you know it's significant because there's a message in that for you that's something you needed to know, something you need to clear. Um, yeah. yeah. Or acknowledge, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or acknowledge, Hello. yeah. Hi. Hi, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Lola. Everybody, this is Lola, Lola and Michelle. Hello. Michelle and Lola haven't met before. Um, <laughs> Lola and I met on an animal communications course years ago at Taronga Park Zoo. Beautiful. Yeah. And we've been close ever since. We get into the same heavy raves that you and I get into, full on. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> They're wonderful conversations. So what have you been talking about today? What have I popped in on? Oh, Grace. <laughs> I've been naked. <laughs> grace has been naked. <laughs> We're joking. We've, we've hit on a... After that show that I blew everyone out with, with the string theory and the effects it has in the healing sense and um, people passing over and the energies at the moment and grounding and recalibrating pendies and um, we got a bit and Michelle had a, a moo cow that's in heaven now and uh, we've been getting a bit upset so standing's been helping us not to cry by saying Grizzly naked. All right. Can we get tissue sex? We can just get the tissue box. Let's get it over and done with. I think I need a drink and I don't drink. The whole audience is going to be crying at this point. Which well, is it's fun. good because we're all healing right. together and we're all in this together. It's good. We're just trying to let everyone know that you don't be out there on your own, you know, and say more than are you okay. It's not enough. Um because there's so much healing going on at the moment. Um, and we've got the Lionsgate coming in on the 8th of the 8th and we've just finished the 7th of the 7th energy. We've got a full moon coming up and we have blue moons too in August. Like we've got a full at the beginning and a full at the end. So the power of this next month is going to be out of control. Oh, shut up. <laughs> shut up, that boy. In a positive shut way. Up. In a positive way. Yeah, but, but if, if everybody's, you know, we make it harder for ourselves if we want to put up the resistance, right? I'm sure everybody's put in a lot of hard yards through the years to even get here. You know, it's been talked about the changeover and one thing and another forever. Yeah. So if you're willing to go the distance, it doesn't have to be as hard you know, as we can speculate it to be. It can be challenging, yeah, and if we want to hang on to this stuff and whatever, but I think it's really important to look at our values because that's what we're moving forward with. It's like a shedding. Yeah. It's your perspective on the whole thing. It's it's not just the hype. It's your own personal perspective. And it'll only be as hard or as easy, I suppose, as um, we allow it to be. You know, so the attachments, the attachments are massive. Everybody's looking at letting go so many attachments because it's not necessary. We're heading in a totally new direction. You know, it's not about doing the same things that we were doing before the same way we were doing them. This is about creating a whole new future, a whole new beginning. 
and so many people have been putting in the hard yards to to get somewhere with it and this is the opportunity so yep. it's a really putting down the roots now and and moving forward with it you know um i know i'm like going yeah okay i'm not too sure about that one but yeah i'm willing to <laughs> 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 and you know i mean that's it it's you know the resistance creates a persistence you know um correct and you know what we what Put into it you know it's our language it's our action it's our expectations you know even more so if we expect something's going to be a particular way um it probably will be whether it's a yay or nay um but our languaging and our expectations are just massive because again you know every energetically everything's moving so fast in a sense yeah okay and we're just creating as we're moving along. Um, some of us get a little bit lost or we have a little trip or, you know, something happens and we get caught caught up in it again. Um, it's funny, I'm kind of envisioning, you know, it's like this gooey stuff. It's like a web, a web of goo. You know, you sort of just pull it off your sort of thing and keep on going. Yeah. Because this now, yeah, August. August is big. August is big for the world. It's not just for the individual. It's the world and the powers that be, so to speak. Yeah. You know, intentions there, and we don't have to buy into that either. So what are we creating for ourselves? If we're creating for ourselves, we're creating for the world, yeah. you know, because we are a collective. Sometimes I feel that, and I know I do, you know, sometimes forget about this sort of thing and just get caught up in whatever. But when you're looking at the big picture of things, it I think sometimes it just makes it easier. Yeah. I think there's purpose. This, it's almost as though the purpose gives you more strength and clarity. Um, yeah. I keep going back to the leaf, you know, floating. I, I know I keep saying it. If you can just kind of pretend you're a leaf floating along, but don't look back, don't really look forward, don't look down, don't look up, just eyes on the horizon and just keep on floating along. Then there's no resistance, just going along, you know, and what will be will be. Can I share something on that? Because yes. that's like it's going with the flow. I went and... I repeated a course in a modality that I'd done, right? And it was quite high energies. Now, I was bouncing, okay? I was like, I just couldn't be anywhere. That was my perspective. That's the way I felt, okay? So anyway, he, the guy in charge, he turned around this one particular day. He just put me in a minute. He said, just float. He said, just go around, observe everybody on the tables, do what you do, blah, blah, blah. And that was it. And it was cruising. It was, and it just went, and my whole body just sort of came down. Yeah. Right? But I also realised that you have to, um, you have to also be quick to make a decision. Okay? It's like. I worked on somebody on the table, we got off and I'm just observing this person and it's like, no, nah, okay, there's something else there. And in that moment it was right, it was like, and that person had given me difficulty on the table because there were entities and whatever, so there was a lot of resistance. And just in my own mind it was like, no, nah, this has got to be done. I set the intention, whatever, I said, okay, you want to do this? Okay, up there. Within a couple of minutes, it was over and done with. And that have, was you found, have you found synchronicity um, super duper fast at the moment and you have to act immediately and trust your instinct immediately? Trust is Which massive. is what you just did. Trust is massive. And it's, it's not, but it's not, it's not, yeah, the trust in yourself 
your spirit, okay, is always important. You know, because, you know, you say that's your intuition, that's your gut feeling, that's your this. So you've got to trust yourself. You know, we have so many experiences through life where our trust has been challenged or we've trusted and then, you know, things that... So it brings us to a point where we second guess ourselves, you mm -hmm. know, in different areas and whatever. So, yeah, absolutely, trust is massive. But so is clear intention. Yeah. Okay, and that's what happened on that table. It was the clear intention. It was, I set, I set it up. It was a clear intention. This is what we're going to do, blah, blah, blah. And it was done. And that was probably the biggest thing that I learned in, the, in that week. Yeah. Was just how clear the intention is. Because then it also brings you present, right, rather than floating around. It's not about the floating around. You have to be present. Okay, because yeah. we can float, and I had to laugh because I got classified. I was called a floater. And I was trying to work out what was going on, you know, for how many days afterwards, and that's what I do. I float. There's no uh, clear commitment, okay, but I'll go from one place to another to another, yeah. But when you set a clear intention, you get to your destination, right? So. It just comes back. You have to have it. If you want to create something, you want to do something, you have to be clear what it is that you're wanting to do, what you're wanting to create, whatever it is. Yeah? Yep. So you've set a destination. And okay. you trust that that's the right one to go on. And that's when your intent and your trust merge and bang, you're on your way. You're not floating <laughs> anymore. Yeah, but this is the flow. The way I interpret you talking about the leaf because the breeze will take you here and there and you're just kind of cruising. If you've set your intention, you, you're in full faith, okay? It doesn't mean you're not going to be challenged or anything like that. But it's an individual's journey, right? Um, but it makes the journey easier. You're, you're going to get there a lot easier and a lot quicker than if you're just higgledy-piggledy. You don't really know where you're going, but, yeah, okay. Um, well, maybe this or maybe that, or do you know? So what I mean? it's, like, it's when you step into a into the flow. Imagine that you're going downstream, not upstream. So upstream is hard. You've got to work hard to get upstream. But if you go with the flow downstream in the boat, it's like that. Except you still need the paddles hmm. because if you want to stop somewhere and go, oh, I wouldn't mind having a look at that how are you going to do that if you don't it's like the leaf on the breeze how are you I going kind to of trust in the knowing that it's going to be the right way but sometimes that's like not having power yeah yeah i yeah i hear you both of you yeah we need yeah, to it, have power and, that, and no choice in where you're going yeah yeah but you're trusting that it's going to be okay for you but it's yeah eventually that so that's choice yeah choice and example okay, because this is it's probably easier for me to say it that way sometimes sometimes when i'd travel i'd go from sydney to byron or wherever and that's that would be my journey right but i would energetically it would take me i would meet all these people in the in, these places and I would just trust that my spirit was guiding me and that's where I'd be. But I had the choice to stop where I needed to. Yes. I had to do what it is that I needed to do. So that again is your own awareness. It's not saying that you, you've just got to keep on going, but the trust in yourself and knowing whether it's the trust in your spirit or in yourself it was more or less the same thing, really. So it's being able to make a decision to stop. Yeah. And part of that is also intuition. So it's the trust in yourself. Yeah. That's what I mean about in my head is there's no restrictions, there's no opposition. It's either way you're going forward. Hang on. Can I, I got a question for Grizz. Yes. Howdy. <laughs> Hello. How are you, mate? When you follow your intuition, 
Okay, with the background you've had. Okay. Yes. You have you have a destination. You have you have a goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're following your gut instinct. You're not just you have an intention and you have a you're following the facts, but you're also following your gut instinct. Yes. Aren't you? So how do you determine? What are you trusting? What are you looking into when when you're on that journey and you're being led to one place or another? Is it your gut? Is it the fact you just you know, something comes into your head and goes, oh, this way or that way or yes or no or your interpretation? I, 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 I use my, well, I call it judgment. So I use my gut feeling and judgment on that. So like when I'm dealing with people, I use body language and micro expressions and uh, I pick up on their vibes. So... Uh, like earlier, you missed it. Somebody asked a question, and it just like it was like, Bleh. yeah. I was like, Michelle, <laughs> tell, we you wake up, you know. <laughs> and she looked at her. So I'm like, it, it's just it just came out, you know. And it's like, what am I doing? I was like, I'm, 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 I'm giving somebody a reading, and I don't know. It's, like, it's not. It's, I don't want to do that, yeah. right? Because I'm scared of it. But uh, it's it's like a mixture. So. You know, it. Uh, I don't know. So it, it's just strange. So there's a lot in your training with that too, though, isn't it? The judgment, like the body language, the. So that's something oh, you're. Familiar I'm, with. I'm, I'm very good. My daughters that's hated me. Something you're that's, familiar. That's why with. I'm divorced. <laughs> yes. No giving. <laughs> so. Yeah. But it's your. You know, this is this is it. This is we all have tools, right? Whatever, however the label to be, whether it's your spirit, whether it's your gut feeling, whether it's your intuition, whether it's you know you're using other tools. Um, we just use what we have to determine, don't we? Well, the we important thing is to have a toolkit. Yeah. Sorry. The important thing is to have a toolkit with things that resonate with your core values. Hmm. There's yeah, because no we are the tool. So we no need problem. boundaries around our tool. Yeah, but really also don't have to, we need to. Don't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be a deck of cards. It doesn't have to be a pendulum. It doesn't have to be a divining rod. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be anything solid like that. No, a deck of cards usually is, is more for the other people. You know, deck cards is usually, you know, it could be like a guidance, you know. A visual. So, visual, right. Well, uh, there are, go ahead. Sorry. No, but these solid things are an extension of yourself. Right. Yeah? So, really, what you're coming back to, and this is, this is, again, what I'm realizing more and more. If you're following, if you're trusting and following your own intuition, Okay, your own gut feelings, your spirit, whatever. If you're fully present and you have clarity in your values, um, and I suppose in a sense there's also a part of that is about being non-judgmental because it's having to stay at um, at a certain point of clarity. Some people would call that point zero, okay, but a certain point of clarity. So whatever messages or whatever intuition or whatever is coming through is not contaminated, okay, for lack of a better word. So if we trust in ourselves, we come back to ourselves and that trust and that faith, like you said, Kath, okay, we don't need any of those outside tools. Those parts of us, okay, actually extend outwardly. They yeah. become for us to play with. Okay. I can douse and do the blink method, for example, which is me. I don't need any tools. I'm blinking for my yes and no. Or I can do the rock method where I'm rocking forward or backwards for yes and no. So like you say, the, 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 the visual um, Tangible. representatives of us inside 
Um, it's just what you feel comfortable with. It's, it's actually helping to tune into the frequency that you need to tune into. We are all just energy and we are tuning into energies, whether they're our own or somebody else's. Yeah. And I set up an area so where that I can, if I'm doing a reading, that I can tune in um, more quickly and yeah. more um, efficiently deliver the messages that is required in that instance. So, and it helps. Sorry. Whereas when I'm out in nature by myself, I'm picking up cues and insights and downloads um, without any tools except that I'm out walking around in nature and grounding and admiring in the present moment. And that's totally different. That's for me. Yeah. But when you when set you the space. This, I look up in front of you like someone's expressions and their energy and you've got the computer and you've got all techno stuff and all that stuff. I just find it easier that to have something that I trust, that I've tuned, like Kath has, has calibrated her pendulum. She trusts that, um, that I've tuned, you know, my tools so that I can do the job. Exactly. Better. You're setting the intent and the boundaries up mm -hmm. to do immediately. It's a blueprint. I've yeah. set a blueprint so that, like yeah, symbolism, yeah. we've had the, the discussion, you know, um, with the Reiki symbols. Um, mm. Some people prefer not to use the symbols, some do. Um, and that, to me, it's the same thing. You're setting up the intention, you're setting up the boundaries. Um, you can either use the symbols or not. You know, it doesn't matter because as soon as you're zoning in to set up your, you know, your mission, you're on your yeah. way. Because that's tuning into the frequency. It's tuning into the 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 symbol is just the focus the focus yep. so that all energy can be focused to that point so you can tune into that. And some people yep. actually do not need to do that. Yeah, that's they, right. They naturally, they naturally have a gift where they just have to think, and it's coming out of their hands. Yeah, you know, it's like fire. But yep. that's the intention. That's what we're yep. coming back to. Then everything yep. comes to the intention, right? Yep. Yep. Full circle. <laughs> it's a good Inside. world we're in. <laughs> Intention, yeah. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Especially in a he in healing, when you're healing somebody else, you do need to have a new an intention. Marty Venstri, get off. You're supposed to be working. <laughs> <laughs> we are. <laughs> we are. <laughs> oh, dear. So, how have you been, Lola? Hey, Michelle. No pun intended. Michelle? What was that? No pun, no pun intended. intended. Grizz and his cat balls. You are not working. You're on it's Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did I miss? Someone's trying to ring me and I'm trying to turn them off. Sorry. Uh, is that what's vibrating? I'm like, look at all of my studio. I'm like, no. what is that noise? You know what? I'm trying to. <laughs> and they're like, I'm going, stop. I was getting ready to throw some holy water. Right there, there went Lola. Yeah, Lola had to go quickly. Did she run away? Yeah. Everyone runs away from me. <laughs> oh, no, nah, she had to go. She's, um, she house sits and looks after animals and she does a lot of animal healing and people healing and energy healing she does a lot of house clearing um very talented in many ways very yeah. gifted yeah so she's right about the intent i know if, if ever i went into a healing energy healing and i didn't um set the intention before I started and if i didn't ground properly then i get whacked with a whole heap of toxic crap that yeah. would just not make me spew on the spot. And it was always a big fat lesson for me. And I'd go, oh, my God. And then pit the poor people and person on the table go, are you okay? I'm sorry I'm doing that to you. I said, no, you're not. It's not your fault. Just hang just hang there. And I'd have to leave and get ring group and because <laughs> I'd be on the point of spewing, right, and I'd have to go out 
set my intention, come back, reg round, come back in, restart. Well, before, I right? think somebody wants you to set your intentions right now. Yes. Yeah. 1975. <laughs> Do you guys? I'm not seeing any of the comments. comments. Nope. Well, click on your comments. Another comment. Oh, hi, Lola, back again. I'm back again. I don't know. You, what's you going should on. have two sets of comments. You should have private. You should have comments. Oh, so I, I, I was trying to get on to say I couldn't hear anybody, and what? then I just oh. disappeared. What? <laughs> what? Huh? That happens a lot with us. <laughs> <laughs> Stingray's asking, "Do we do readings? You guys good? Are good at readings? Do we do? I readings? do readings. <sighs> yep." I know why he's asking. <laughs> I'll do readings. Kath, Kath, does, Kath, do you do readings? Um, I, I do the occasional cards, but animal spirits, animal dreaming, Mayan, Egyptian, um, but very rarely. Like today I pulled out the deer, for example, for the show. Um, I'll do things like that, but um, I don't feel I'm – that's my <laughs> – Sorry. You're not getting these. It's, Stingray said, somebody read me. I, 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 I already, you. already did. So I'm like, whoa, <laughs> baby. Calm it down there, Stingray. Oh, dear. I used to be more healer than reader, but then I found that um, the guidance really helped with that the head I don't do yeah. much of that because I'm not in contact with anybody the only contact I have with people is here pretty much other than that I don't mm. see anyone talk to anyone go anywhere you know like oh, I don't just... have an area set up where I can do it like one-on-one -on -one anymore so um that's just the that's just the way things are at the moment yeah like I do my dowsing ones do you do the cards Lola it's oh, funny, I've just pulled out a deck of cards. I haven't used the cards for such a long time. Usually it's just about tuning into the person. and having Yeah, I'm not good enough at that. Man, listen to Stingray. Quit rubbing yourself there, man. Hold up. Look at him. Okay, we're listening, Stingray. What would you like to know? <laughs> Don't ask that question, Stingray. Change it. <laughs> oh Lord well, have mercy. You, Stingray often comes to our shows and everywhere. It's good. <laughs> he cheers us up a lot. <laughs> nice one. He's been curious for one once. I have a feeling Anyone? that um, he, he has a lot of roadblocks and conflict with others. Um and he may not necessarily mean to do it. It's just the way it happens. <laughs> and he's really good at it. <laughs> he's cheeky. He's I very just, cheeky. I just did Stingray. He doesn't that's, mean that's Aussie he girls has his natural talent of being able to do it. He's yeah. so good at it. Yeah. Us, us Aussie girls are very practical. Bang, bang. <laughs> that's it. Yep. <laughs> I'm not delving any deeper. <laughs> it's the same on my, uh, if I do anything on my page, it's quick, you know, one card, bang, message, done, done, done. You know, that's... Um, if anyone wants to go deeper, then they need to, like, book in because I don't do stuff in public because yeah. there's stuff that comes up that, yeah. you know, and it messes with the flow because you can't say it and you're thinking it and or it's dropping in and you're going, can't say that. Um, yeah. But when it's one-on-one, -on -one, you can actually, um, you can really, you know, do it a lot. Yeah, better. and then you've got the support there when it's needed immediately, if needed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And there's no embarrassment. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, right. go with no embarrassment. Oh, and then there are some other like pretty traumatic things, um, sensitive things. Yeah, you wouldn't want to embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
are you going to say, Lola? No, I'm just saying that, you know, sometimes people don't want to go where they think they want to go. And, yeah. you know, for sometimes for what some people are asking for, they're not always prepared for it. And online is definitely not the place to do it. No. Well, there are some people think they're going to get one thing and turn around and get something they don't expect. Yeah, big yeah. slap face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So, so yeah, no, no, it's it, there, there has to be a protocol that you can't just go blabbing stuff out all over the internet, yeah, because they're privacy and ethics, yeah, magic. I'm Possibly big on the privacy and ethics, <laughs> yes, yes. And sensitivity. Mm. Mm. Embarrassment. <laughs> you can make us go, or you can make me go red instantly. Like some of the thoughts, boom. <laughs> Good things. <laughs> yeah, that went quiet for a bit, didn't it? Yes, uh -huh. I did. Did yeah. you just say the wrong things? <laughs> Nobody wants to say the wrong thing. Embarrassed. We're all looking, we're all looking in the other direction, too, <laughs> away from each other. Lola? <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm just trying to shift what I can feel. <laughs> okay, all right. So look at it this way. This is ethics, right? We're talking about ethics now. You want to turn this around? <laughs> yep, go for it. <laughs> Well, it is. It's ethics. It um, okay, I'll share you. So okay, when I was doing the markets, we we're doing this readings, and uh, you know, it's I don't like putting labels on anything. Um, so it was how do I how do I sell myself, so to speak, at the market? Okay, so the person that I was working with, they said, oh, you know, just put psychic. Psychic healing, you know, psychic readings. And I says, no, I don't want to, I'm not doing readings as per se. I says, I'm I'm offering healings, you know. And so that's what I did. And there's a woman that came one day. And the funny thing, I realised that I met her years and years ago. And she was actually an artist and she just confirmed that with me afterwards. Anyway, there's specific things that she wanted to know. And I made it very clear with her before we started the way I work, the way I do things, you know, and what's provided. But she was very um, specific within her own mind of what her expectation was, regardless of what it was that I had said to her. Um, so we did what we did and she got, I shared something with her. I validated certain things that she had asked me about and who it was that had come in. But she got so angry and so upset with what I had said to her that then she started to, she tried to just abuse me. You're not this, that, the other. You're not that, the other. You are this, but you're not that. And I said, well, I never presented myself as this now it made me come back to myself okay what have I done here have I done the right thing I've presented to myself presented to her the way I was what my gifts were or you know the way I worked that was all introduced to her that was all spoken to her and we discussed whatever before we even started anything she actually got the answer to her question, but she didn't like what she was told. So she got angry and she got upset. So I could either take that to heart, which I didn't, but it made me go back and assess everything through that session to see where my integrity was, where her integrity was, what it was that actually happened. And the thing was, she she wanted she wanted a specific answer. Okay, but she got the answer, but it wasn't the answer she wanted. 
So she you got out. You just didn't tell her what she wanted to know. Yeah. No, I didn't tell her what she wanted to hear. Yeah. Which yeah. are two different things. And that's exactly right because, and you'll find that a lot of people who go on and get free readings on the internet, reading junkies I call them, are just looking for someone to tell them what they want to hear. Yeah. Because it's going to come back to me. Does he love me? Oh. <laughs> Should I take my ex back? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's only in that moment of time anyway. <laughs> well, this is it. This is I, I now get a really dark sense of humor with that, and I, I want to <laughs> say to people like, <laughs> you know, that um, that I sh shouldn't say. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like a reverse ATM. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I have to like stop myself from actually, you know, doing. Have that. you seen the latest trend? They got this little device. And it's a magnet underneath of it. And it's it's like a pendulum with another magnet. And they smack it. And you ask it a question. And people are on TikTok asking questions. Is my boyfriend still love me? And like, hold on. And they click it. And then it, it goes. Da, 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 and then wherever it slows down, a magnet pulls it to the answer. Yes, maybe. Just like a uh, pendulum uh board. And I'm like, you got to be joking. And they're getting paid for doing this. I'm like, what? But, what, you know, but like a year ago, I got filthy about this as well. You know how the, the biggest marketing trick last year was bending spoons? You know, it had nothing to do with what they were teaching in, in a lot of situations, but that's how they dragged everybody on. You know, let's all learn how to bend spoons, you know. And a great marketing trick. It worked. But, you know, like that's why I was saying about the crystals, Lola, I was saying in the beginning that um, when crystals and that first came out, you know, um, it it became a mass operation and they ended up stripping most of our crystals, you know, pretty much. And um, this, like these other tools that people are using, I've never heard of that one. Oh, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, have, Lola, have you seen it? No, I haven't. I yeah, haven't. It's, it's wild. I haven't seen it. I don't. Yeah, it annoys me. I used to um, I used to be on a spiritual events directory, but that uh, really. Rebecca's got a question. I didn't know if the property of a resident ghost is in a bulldoze and covered over, would the ghost stay there and think it hasn't changed? I would say so. Yeah. So yeah. that is called a residential haunting, residual haunting. Yeah, there wouldn't know the difference. They're not on the physical plane, are they? They're right. on a, a different plane. So you think about you think about the land you live on, and the, all the countries and the history that goes beyond, you know, along with it. What we see in the physical changes all the time, but the energies are still there, but they're just existent on another plane or another dimension. However, you want to. This is right. why some walk down the street or something and you or a certain area will have a certain feeling because you still have spirit or whatever it might be still residing in that area and prime, they, prime example is like your house you uh moved a bedroom right seven yeah. years ago you added a room or whatever and you see a ghost walk through a a, a wall well 70 years ago that used to be a room that ghost doesn't know a difference because it's just, re, you know, it's like a record player. Yeah. yeah. So re residual. So, so well, yeah, people, it, it's not intelligent. You know, they say, oh, I, I saw somebody sitting in the corner on this couch, you know, but there's no couch there in the corner. Right. So it's, yeah, the formation is still the same in the dimension that wrapped in, you know, just in another dimension. Yeah, that's still a good question. It is. L Lola does a lot of clearing, don't you, Lola? Sting Rang, nobody said you was a homosexual. <laughs> Thanks, Sting <laughs> Rang. He had that one coming, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I had to. 
goodness. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. I had to focus there on that one. Yes. Ghosts are um a very yeah, it's, it's there's all different sorts, isn't there? There's it's totally yeah. As you said, it's just a residual energy. And they are on the same In, can I interrupt? Hmm. Yeah, go for it. The other day, I, I was trying to upgrade my dousing skills because I didn't feel I was up to standard as far as all the house clearing and balancing and all that went. Yeah. So um, I've always thought that I had this lady spirit in the house and um, because a lady passed over in the house, like I'm aware of it, and Fluffy over here, she goes at 3.30 every afternoon and, and watches and goes all spooky at 3.30 in the afternoon. And then, do you think I should tell them, Lola? Yeah. I'll have to now. Um, <laughs> anyway, I found out that, no, Serena had gone. She's been gone a long time. And I'm thinking, what? You know, what? And I find, I find out that I have another, I had another friend here in the house, a male friend, um, which was really nice to find out. The circumstances were not nice. Um, he was with some backpackers in the house. Um, the people that owned the house had, like, offered for these backpackers to stay in the house and um, they picked up this other guy, which is what I call my South American friend. Um, it took me a while to talk to him because I didn't, I couldn't figure out the language at first, and then I realised, ah, oh, it's Spanish, South American. And then I was able to speak to him. I know little bits of Spanish, and um, I, you know, I was asking him what happened. You know, do you want to stay? Do you want to go? Do you, have you got any messages? Can I help you? All that sort of stuff. I find out that he'd been murdered in my house, and nobody knew that. Had it happened, I, not funny, <laughs> and um, yeah, so anyway, so we had a good talk and everything. Asked him, did he need anything? And um, he's went on his way, he was happy at the fact that finally someone realized that he was missing and what had happened. Um, because I, I it was really hard to get any more information for him because he was like 22 when it happened it happened in uh, i think it was 1982 um young guy 22 you know anyway then you know how i've been dousing the yard finding energies i found him i've got a pit in my backyard right when the rain comes on really badly because i parked the car under this i made this shade cloth garage right and um so I, I couldn't figure it out because all the time this it fills up with <laughs> it fills up with water and um so i i took the car out numerous times it was driving me nuts but the thing that drove me nuts was the soil color forensics um the soil was forensic soil it was not your normal soil different soil color texture smell all of that i had the soil tested i know you think i'm funny but i Bobby. had the soil tested and everything you know because you know anyone can think you're a nut whatever who cares so i like to prove myself you know in situations like this especially that kind of stuff anyway so i'm trying to fix up the the garage all the time because the water comes up and um, so I have to rake it because I get bogged in my garage. It sinks down like this, the car. So um, anyway, I have to rake it, you know, and get soil. And so I filled it with rocks one time. That didn't work. That just gave me a busted tire. So I had to take all the rocks out. Anyway, these bones start popping up, right? This is before this incident that I'm talking well, that's about. Body. These these big bones kept popping up and I'm going, ooh, yeah. So I got this mate of mine. There used to be a... Um, did, did you sniff them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I checked the cuts and everything, you know, the marks. And anyway, um, 
I thought, oh, no, I need a bit of assistance on this one. There used to be a farrier that lived here. This house here used to own all the land around it and it had a big orchard and um, it, that was the first people that owned it. Then the next person was a farrier. So there's all bits and pieces of, you know, horseshoe stuff pops up every now and again. I'm also on a Chinese bloody gold sluice. So I am I often find bits of Chinese pottery or jewellery. It's not funny. I can't sleep. And then I'm uh, laughing at Stingray, not you. Are uh, you still stirring you? Um, <laughs> no. Well, I'm talking about bones and death and a dead man in my backyard. <laughs> anyway, so I take the bones. I get a, a person to come. It could only happen to you, like really. Uh, like, I know. I'm always good. sent to these situations for oh. for some reason, you know. Anyway, so I, I get this guy to come over because I wanted to check out the bones, you know, because I'm thinking they're quite large. If there was a farrier here, they're probably horses, you know, like probably not cows. So. This cocky comes over and he checks out my bones <laughs> and he says, oh, yeah, they're definitely animal bones like this, you know, and he says, oh, they, it's very odd. They haven't been cut, so it wasn't like an abattoir kind of situation, you know, the bones are animal bones and that. Anyway, so I bless the whole area and do all that, you know, all the animals or everyone that was involved and but now, guess where my mate is? My Spanish mate. He's up there with them. I keep doing it, verifying it, rods, that everything I've taken out there to try and, you know, confirm my... <laughs> Are you so, going to take it further? The only way... <laughs> The only way I can take it further, I've thought in my mind, because it's a pretty sticky situation, to say the least, it's black gunk. It's like oil. I thought I'd struck oil when I found this pit and because um, it kept gurgling up this stuff. And the only thing I, that I've come to happiness with is um, I've tried to find out, you know, who was missing those that year, um, if I could find anywhere from his country, if he was listed over there, but it's too hard. There's thousands of them missing from over his way. Like I can't go any further other than dig up the whole pit, which, uh, -uh. Mm. <laughs> but you know, I try to upgrade my skills, you know, to bang. Well, they work, don't they? They certainly <laughs> did. And I, but you know what? I felt really, in, I've had a lot of bad things happen in this house, you know, like intruders, guns, all sorts of rubbish. And um, but I've always come through the other side pretty well. And um, when when I was talking to him, it he's been protecting me all this time. It was really nice. That's interesting. Yeah, because like there's only ever been my daughter and I here in the house. We've never had any other form of physical you know, male protection, stop laughing. Because... <laughs> so, yeah, that was what I learnt from my upgrading of the skills. I blew the teacher right out. <laughs> it's funny. So you're not going to do anything comfortable? I don't feel I can dig up the pit. <laughs> I'll probably get locked up. <laughs> <laughs> what, for digging holes in your backyard? Oh, yeah, my neighbours, they... Okay. I have feng shui mirrors, I have tor turtles, I have all sorts of things in my yard. I could probably get a big truck to take out the tourmaline that's involved, uh, repairing the house because of the rocks in here. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, I can talk to that. <laughs> Yeah, Lola's seen it. <laughs> like electromagnetics, yeah, bring it on. <laughs> Honestly, uh. I know. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder my cat goes off. <laughs> mm. Anyway. Mm, mm, mm. C'est la vie. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to touch that. 
Uh-uh. <laughs> I didn't want to touch that either, you know, and I can't be 100% because, you know, I don't want any ego involved, you know what I mean? And um, But at the same time, interesting. But I'll tell you what, since my mate has gone off on his happy way, the cat no longer goes there at 3.30. <laughs> Go on, Kath, give him a card. Okay. What kind do you want? Animal? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess spiders are his favourite. Uh, I'm not a fan of those. The other day the weather changed severely here and all those big black furry ones come out. <laughs> Okay, hang on. <laughs> You're going to like this, boys and girls. <laughs> I knew it was going to be a fox. I was just about to say it's a fox. Guess what it says? Symbology, symbology right? <laughs> Cunning, sexuality, creativity. Like the coyote, the fox is strongly associated with magic, supernatural power, and cunning. In the wild, it, it exists at the edges of field and forest. There and has it go. <laughs> and in the mythical realm is a principal mediator between the human and the spirit worlds. In Chinese folklore, the fox may assume a human shape at the age of 50, and its 100th birthday it becomes either a wizard or a lovely maiden. Red foxes such as this one... Uh, depicted in this painting are associated with oh god sexual energy and the creative life force some native american legends speak of a hunter discovering his wife to have a secret fox identity is that about right <laughs> oh that's funny it is <laughs> a cunning intelligent creature where's the yeah. response Here's his response. She's given you a card. Where's some feedback? Yeah, he's gone hiding. <laughs> uh, he's gone, oops. <laughs> well, you asked. <laughs> Contemplation. That was, that was hilariously accurately. Yeah. I find these really, really nice. These are these ones. I haven't seen those. They're all. Oh, there are and these, these ones are good. Yeah. Um, those ones. And then I like this one. Haven't got that one. I love this one. Oh yeah, no, I don't have that one. And this one's a, this one's an odd one. I don't worry, I've only got one more. Yeah. That's quite modern, that one. But the best one that I've I've always had all my life and the only way that I've got myself out of a lot of trouble sometimes, you know, when you really need help and you can't get any answers, are yeah, these ones. They're beautiful cards, those ones. Yeah. yeah I've got those. Jamie mm. Sam's beautiful. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. other than that, I don't really, like <clears throat> I very often don't use them. Has he disappeared yeah. altogether? No, he's still there. Does he want to ask anything else? <laughs> or have we kind of... 1975, he should be turning into a silver fox by now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Foxy lady. Um, standing stones. Um, is it standing? Into Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm It's <laughs> got a bit quiet. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I don't think I should. Okay. <laughs> You're not going to add any more to that? Not really. <laughs> I think that says enough. This is why I don't do foxes are you know, notorious like, for getting into the hen's house, so it's like 
Duh. Three of us. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> yeah, look. Look, say what he just said. So, yeah, I have nothing else to oh, We love you, Stingray. <laughs> Now we know who you are. You've been, you've been, what do they say? Measured? Um, <laughs> Something all of that. Stripped. That naked. No. You've been seen, you've been measured, and you've been found wanting. <laughs> Like oh, oh yeah, I did get the hermit card for you, but I didn't want to say that in public, Stingray. That you are a hermit. Yes. Me too. Probably because of all the conflict you have with everybody. You have this <laughs> you have this sense of humor that not everybody gets. So Yeah. Yeah. But us girls, we're pretty dry. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, I upset that. Remember I said about the kitty cat? You said, oh, he's run away? Like, Thank you for the confirmation of that, by the way, because <laughs> I wasn't going to say it because I was like, oh. Some people don't like the fact that when you say that you're a hermit. <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't worry me one bit, you know, at all. That's okay because the hermit is meant to shine a light for others. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he's a foxy hermit. <laughs> well, that's cute. And he's a stingray on top. Yeah. <laughs> so all the min um, you know, air. Oh, uh, so you are a silver fox. Cool. Me and my cat, dear oh dear. Mine's the same. Same colour. Okay. That someone used to say that to uh, regularly used to say to me, if you keep this up, you're just gonna end up being an old lady in bed drinking your whiskey with your cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got that wrong, didn't I? Because <laughs> there was this other lady that we knew that was definitely like that. She used to drink Johnny Walker and she had the cat. Except they'd say, you know, pussy instead. And I was like, whatever. Uh, uh. <laughs> whatever <laughs> so this oh you're born 60 all right so he's definitely silver that's fluffy yeah. up there same I've color got, phoebe's down here asleep beside the um beside the thing i was doing a reading before i came on this morning and phoebe <laughs> came up and over and onto the table and the lady went oh that's your familiar and I went oh, don't really think of it like that <laughs> family silver fluffy. blonde baby before I started fluffy came and sat on the laptop and then sat on all the rocks that I've got here and then oh. I tried to move her you know to open up the laptop and yeah. she bit me <laughs> Well, Phoebe has got my crystals, um, which are all in nice little spots around the place, but she's got them like she plays ping pong with them, I'm sure, because they, they've ended up all over the house in weird places and I don't know not know where they all are. So um, a crystal is obviously going to keep turning up everywhere. So she's very naughty. I can hear yes, her. Yes. See ya? Yeah. They're, both, they're identical, Lola. You. It, are they almost identical. Yeah. No, that's, that's rags. This one's a Oh, new that's one. a different one. Oh. Rags, is, rags is out hunting rats. Oh. Hello. Hello, booty quitty. Welcome hey, aboard, you. darling. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm not pretty. She's a bit pretty, oh. isn't she? Yeah. I like I the cows. Hey? The colouring like the like the cows. Yeah, I know it's weird, isn't it? She's I've never she's tortoise shell, obviously, but I've never um and she's really tiny. Yeah. Oh, look at her. She's got patches oh, yeah. of ginger tabby on her. Oh how are you? Can you hear it? Burr, burr, burr. Yeah. Her into the microphone, putty cat. She oh, goes, Oh, look at the crystals on your desk. 
I'm looking so, at She's very loving. I um I like oh. her. Yeah. Yeah. He's a friendly one. My couldn't do that with mine. Uh uh. No. My other cat, he's he's um he's an asshole. We've been banned from all the vets, all the kennels. Bye. Because they say I bring anxiety and my cat brings anxiety to the kennels. Really? Oh, yes. I have anxiety because they killed two of my other animals, you know. So, yes, I do have anxiety when I have to go there. <laughs> they didn't kill them literally, but one of them, they're, they're not nice people. But, yeah, of course I got anxious. And she reckoned that my cat, my anxiety went to my cat and my cat set off the whole kennels and I wasn't allowed back. Wow. What they mean? And, you know, she used to have the best reputation in the district of being the best, well, most well-behaved cat until this <laughs> beep <laughs> person put their hand in the cage to get her out of the cage <laughs> at the net. Exactly. You know, beep, beep, got a point. Beep, beep. You go, and then there's that body in the garage. So that's what Stingray said. So I, he's got a point, Kath. What is going on? Well, <laughs> I've got an underground creek. I'm on a gold sluice. I've got cut people in my yard, one that got murdered in my lounge room. <laughs> I've got a massive yeah. tower over here, and I've got Lockheed just over here. So mm. you're giving us, <laughs> us Aussies a bad reputation. <laughs> Oh, well, they say we're easy going. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, my cat, Yolanda, my cat, the other cat, not not this one, the other one actually talks and he, he talks loudly and he says my name. This one uh, says Molly out loud. Michelle. <laughs> 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 it's very annoying. <laughs> yes, Rags. What is the and he comes in and he wants to go out and he's basically ripped because I lock him in, in at night because they're not allowed out. It's law now, you're not allowed to have them outside, which is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So I lock him in at night so he's not causing trouble. But um yeah, so he'll sit at the door and they'll look at me and go, Michelle. <laughs> I know, but you're not allowed out. <laughs> Very bad. Is hungry all the time? Yes. Same as this one. Well, I can hardly pick him up. He's so heavy. Same as this one. Yeah. The vet got the poos because she said, oh, this is a big cat. Yeah, because they're terrified of her. Because <laughs> I lift her up. If I stand I her on the legs, like she, you know, like up on two legs, she comes up to here. Oh, not there, but, you know. Close to it. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> Can you not go do the visual on that? Like, no, sorry. I've my got my Syrian. Uh, yeah, where is it? She comes up to where? Um, my tum -tum. Yeah, my, mine's, a, mine's an asshole. He, um, <laughs> he takes revenge on me. So if I don't do exactly what he wants me to do, he pisses, he pisses and shits on the floor right in front of the kitchen sink. So, and if I wander out in the dark in the middle of the night or in the morning, stumble out to, you know, fill the coffee maker, I step in, bleep, bleep, bleep. And do, you get, do you get slapped across the mush? Uh, he'll bite. He no slaps stop. in the middle of the night or opening the eyelids? Oh, yeah, no, I don't let him in the room anymore. He's an <laughs> <laughs> I think they're related. It's a good thing they haven't met each other. Bite you on the finger. Yeah. I'm, I'm hungry. Covered in scars. And the yeah. latest trick is smacking me on the leg as I walk past. As a, Because both times I went out grounding, you know, when I was upset and that, when I came back because I'd been gone for the day, usually I never get out, um, she was slapping me around the legs as I walked past. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at Stingray. I've got to stop looking at the comments. I can't see them. <laughs> Come on, let us play the game. Come on, let us play the game of love, love. <laughs> no, he says, I guess I can never live with you, Michelle. I'm just like that cat. Yeah, an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> 
We're lovely ladies. <laughs> That's all cut. Yeah. yeah, no, we've been doing it for a while. I've even talked to other animal communicators to try and fix the problem so they could actually talk to him. And he doesn't think that there's a problem. No, neither does this one. <laughs> they they rule the roost. <laughs> but good thing they never meet up. Like, I don't want to cross genetics with these two. <laughs> No, no. I don't know why these animals get sent to me. Mother used to say to me, she said, you know, all your animals are weird, Michelle. Weird. <laughs> huh? What do you mean? She says they're very weird. They behave very weirdly. Oh, what, wow. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'd rather have them than not, though. I had to teach this one how to growl because I lost my dogs. And then, you know, I've as I was saying, I get a lot of action in my house and yard, so it can get a tad scary at times. So when I lost the dogs, you know, I didn't have my barking and that going on. So I taught her how to growl. She goes, <laughs> I know there's someone outside now, you know. you got to give her a loud speech. Yeah. yeah, I've thought about taping her, you know, and then turning it up really loud. <laughs> She's intelligent then if you can teach her stuff like that. She can they say, are intelligent. Hmm. yeah, like she, I, she can say I love you. You can hear it clear as day, you know, hmm. like really clear. Is that as before day. or after she slaps you? Um, when she wants Tucker. <laughs> uh, when she yeah. wants a taco. Tucker, Tucker, food. Oh, I was like a taco. <laughs> no, 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 no tacos. Oh, I'd love a taco. I was I like, I want a taco. Yeah, me too. Don't even go there, Stingray. Just stop it right there in the tracks, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Good idea. Yeah. All right. Okay, then. Well, thanks for making us all laugh again. <laughs> <laughs> we were in tears, Lola. It's been a bit of a... Um... Oh, she's over here in stitches. She's just trying to conceal herself. <laughs> it's no wonder. She I only know. The tail she end. doing a good job because her body's going. <laughs> but I'm really happy you two have met Michelle well. and Lola. Now you'll understand <laughs> what I mean when I speak of each of you. <laughs> it's, it's a bit dangerous way. having two of us on here that actually know you. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> the stories we can here tell. Here it comes. I knew something was coming. Beavis. <laughs> too quick <laughs> of course i cannot read that because well i'll get banned off youtube is that that and the audio people would probably wreck the car in the morning so yep that's one will get that one will get me kicked. yep that's right yeah <laughs> correct so. oh, dear. on yeah. that note i think i'll um Gotta go, to go check on some cows. I yeah, thought you that's... said you gotta go shampoo. I'm like, yeah, I haven't heard that since I was a kid. <laughs> we do it. I'm shampooing. I gotta do my hair. Yeah. <laughs> no. I gotta go check on the cow, the coos. Yeah, the coos. Unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming on. Thanks for putting yeah, up with me all the time. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Hold on before I can, look. Y'all got me hitting all these damn buttons. I don't know which button I'm hitting. Thanks now. For having got me. Me laughing. All right, ladies and gentlemen from coast to coast and around the world. That's a wrap. Thank we'll you. We'll see everyone. you on the next edition. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, all. Thanks, Thanks, Shelly. Thanks, Greasy. Bye. 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 It's a grizzly. Shh, shh, shh. Get out of here.
out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. It's a grizzly. Oh, ship, should we run? <laughs> no. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, shit. should we run? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a grizzly. Are you sure it's not a chipmunk? <laughs> No, I'm out of here. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, I'm out of here. Huh. Maybe it is a chipmunk. It's a grizzly. Are we gonna die? I don't know. We're just gonna sit here and listen and watch. Let's get out of here, maybe. <laughs> Fall! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>